when the offensive and defensive linemen walk out together before the game. Uh, you know, those are the guys that you do battle with all week, and uh, now you're going out into battle. Before every game, my dad uh, comes down the field, and uh, you know, I give him a big hug, and I, you know, just tell him thanks, you know, for everything he's done for me, and that, uh, you know, I love him, and I appreciate all the support he's ever given me. A special bond has always existed here amongst players, family, and just general fans. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. With Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Dan could be a celebration. 25 years for Tom Osborne. He could win number 250 against Oklahoma. That's 10 wins a year, partner. And the amazing thing about it is, Brent, he's done it his way. In this age of throwing the ball all over the place with spread offenses and five wide receivers, he's done it by running the ball. This offense this year is averaging nearly 400 yards a, gra a game on the ground. Undisputed leader, quarterback Scott Frost. It used to be a huge rivalry with Oklahoma, but the last few years it's been one-sided. And here comes Tom Osborne, who struggled early on against the Sooners, but who has dominated them over the last few years. The top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers, ready to do battle with Oklahoma for the last time until the year 2000. The kickoff is coming up. A lot of industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver side was the only logical choice. But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. Considering the cost of today's exotic multi-metallic engine parts, shouldn't you use an antifreeze coolant with a patented new formula designed to protect your entire engine? Xerox Antifreeze, extreme protection for today's engines. Strength, knowledge, and experience. That's the Pacific Life family of companies. Managing more than $150 billion in assets, Providing insurance and investment products for 130 years. Helping thousands of businesses and millions of individuals reach their financial goals. Use the power of the Pacific. Pacific Life. Why is America on America Online? It puts the whole internet right at my fingertips. You can send instant messages just like that. The news is breaking. I've got it now. I can stay a little closer to my family. You've got mail. America Online, easy to use, friendly menus. Put in the disc, click, you're online. And we've been working night and day to more than double capacity and make it even easier. I got homework help, and my dad thinks I'm a genius. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Presenting the Valvoline Big Play Rebate and Sweepstakes. Save $4 on a case of Valvoline Motor Oil, and you could win one of six Mark Martin signature Ford Thunderbirds. Here comes Mark now. He's up and right the money. Valvoline, the number one choice of top mechanics. From Lincoln, Nebraska, the top rank of this, but there seemed to be a storm in the background, partner. Before we got a storm that got hail and this began to take all weather. Six days ago, a freak snowstorm came in here. Obviously, Oklahoma will kick off with it at their back. Jerome Alexander should rip this behind him. Nebraska's first series should be coming out for the 20-yard line. Let's see what happens here. He certainly has enough wind at his back. In fact, somebody might have to hold the ball. You can see how it's bouncing down the artificial turf here in Lincoln. That'll give you an idea of how stiff that wind is. That's the one thing Tom Osborne said about his offense and the fact that they love to run the ball. Weather, wind, rain, snow, whatever you want will not affect this man's offense. A little bit of help. Alexander, the 5'10 senior, will get it started.
Yes, sir. Coming out. That'll give us plenty of time to take a look at the Chili's starting offensive lineup for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Scott Frost improving at quarterback and Joel Makavica, the tough walk on fullback. He'll lead you to the action. Tim Carpenter, the tight end, usually very busy for the Huskers and a great offensive line. Josh Heskew from Yukon, Oklahoma, has looked so forward to this game. The Sooners, he said, snubbed him when he was coming out of high school, and he has proven everybody wrong. He'll anchor this offensive line today and snap the ball to Frost on first down. A delay on Green, cut back middle, and Green explodes for a first down. 15 yards on his first carry of the game against this Sooner defensive unit that'll be hard-pressed. Martin Chase, number 93 out of Lawton, Oklahoma, anchors the defensive front. The linebacker. Corey L. Ivey from Crandall, Texas, playing well, according to Coach Wright. And then the safeties. They had to go to work right away at strong safety. Number 13, Terry White, figures to be very busy. First down for the Huskers, coming out from the old 35-yard line. Green again, pounds for six, fumble! And Oklahoma says they've got it, and they do. Oklahoma turns it over on the second play of the game. How about that, Sooner fans? The Huskers have given it up. Amon Green upset, saying that he was down. It's a power play. Watch both the off guard and off tackle pull. See who knocks the ball loose. Tremendous turnover for Oklahoma. Ball is clearly out. Clearly a fumble. Corey L. Ivey with the recovery. Fuente hands off. To the starting or running back, that's Seth Luttrell, number 35, as we take a look at our Chili's starting lineup for the Sooners. Along with Luttrell, we are going to see a true freshman, J.T. Thatcher, because Devon Parker, their leading running back, is out with an injury, not even in uniform. Steven Alexander, a very good tight end. Second down and eight yards to go for the Sooners. Play fake. Fuente down, got the middle, and he overthrew the tight end that time. Steven Alexander had broken free in that secondary. Brian Shaw had the coverage, and here's our offensive line. Bruce McClure is the center, number 73. He will anchor it. They're going to be under pressure from that defensive unit all day long. Let's watch that tight end here, Danny. Well, this is the matchup they want. They want to get Shaw on Alexander. This gives Oklahoma a great advantage. 20 fumble. Nebraska's got it. McFarland going for the end zone. Octavius to the 15. Down at the 8-yard line. First and goal. Nebraska. Grant Wistrom, number 98, will knock this ball loose from Quincy right there. And then he gets a great Asco turf bounce to McFarland. Watch the effort by J.T. Thatcher as he prevents the touchdown by McFarland. The true freshman running down the linebacker. And the Cornhuskers match turnovers early here in the first quarter. It'll be interesting to see if big Joel McAvicka the 5'11", 240-pound junior fullback, number 45, gets a call here early on. Amon Green, who turned it over, is back in the game. McFarland picking up that fumble and giving the Huskers their first scoring opportunity of this game. 13.36 to go in the opening quarter. First and goal. They line up in that eye. They love the option play down in this part of the field, Brent. The call the first time they carry the ball after his fumble, and he powers inside the five yard line where it'll be second and goal right at the five. That's where his knee went down, and the ball is spotted right on the five yard line. There's our coach Blake under fire down in Oklahoma, but he got a big vote of confidence this week from the president of the university who said without question he'll be back next year. Legate is in as an extra power back. 
Here is the option. Frost keeping it cut off. Now late pitch into Mark Green. Forced out of bounds by number two, Mike Woods. Out of Dell City, Oklahoma, did a fine job defensively for the Sooners. That was a beautiful job of defensing the option. They made Frost indecisive as he came down the line of scrimmage. He wasn't sure exactly when to pitch this one. Good speed by Oklahoma as they string him all the way to the sidelines. That is a dangerous pitch at the last minute to Green. Wholesale substitutions for the Huskers. Kenny Cheeto checks in at split in. Number six. Now it is third down and goal from the seven. From the shotgun, Frost looks right high, incomplete. It is fourth down. Outstanding job. Shevin Wiggins out of Palmetto, Florida, was the intended receiver, the wingback. And in this situation, Coach Osborne quickly sends his field goal unit onto the field. Yeah, Frost just threw the poor pass right here. And now, you know, Brent, this is no guarantee. It's a short field goal try, but this is going right directly into the win. <laughs> Chris Brown, number 35. Ted Retzlaff is the holder. Good view from this angle. And he pulls it through. So the Huskers on the board with a field goal by Chris Brown after the Fuente fumble. Here is the recovery by the linebacker, Octavius McFarland. He's a senior out of Texas, and he sets up the three-point field goal for Nebraska. Two when you try Chili's Ranch and Filet. A beautifully carved eight ounce tenderloin, slow grilled to perfection and placed on awesome blossom strings. Served with skillet potato cakes and grilled veggies only at Chili's. Dodge Ram gives you the most powerful overall line of pickup engines on the planet including two even more powerful V8s, the most powerful diesel, and the only V10. You'll be glad to know we also worked on this, making it easy to answer the oft-asked question, wow, what have you got under there? Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. Okay, they're gone. It's a ton of work, but we can do it. Meet the new Xerox DocuPrint N32. It prints 32 pages a minute on an network. It sorts, too. And can staple like this, and this, and this. We can not do all that. Xerox does. Tell them the best part, Pee-wee. Starts at $2,900. Now we can go to lunch. The Document Company. Xerox. Brian Boitano. Christy Yamaguchi. Katrina Gordieva. Paul Wiley. Rudy Galindo. Nancy Kerrigan. Don't miss skating's biggest names tonight. And for the 10th time in his 25 years here, Nebraska is unbeaten with seven wins. 7-0, seven 10 times in 25 years. You go around the country, you talk to these coaches how tough it is with only 85 scholarships, but they just keep on rolling in Lincoln, Nebraska. A high short kickoff fielded at the 15 by Jackson. Jackson pounded at the 24-yard line. That turnover came so quickly, we did not meet the defensive lineup for the Cornhuskers. So let's take a look at our Chili's starting lineup. Jason Peter enjoying an outstanding season, according to Coach Osborne. Grant Wistrom forcing the turnover. Jay Foreman, the son of Chuck Foreman, a former great running back at the Minnesota Vikings. And Clint Finley, the hard-hitting free safety who played for his daddy down in Texas. Number 20, he can bring it. First and 10 for the Sooners. So it the end of the middle, high, almost interception, intercepted on the deflection, but again, they try to find Alexander. Dan, he was open again. You know, it's, it's a, sometimes you'd think that with the wind behind you, it would be easy to throw. But what happens is it's almost just as hard because the ball will sail on you. This is two passes now that Fuente has tried to hit Alexander, and the ball's just kind of floated on him. 
This was real close to being intercepted that time by Mike Brown. JT Thatcher. And he used the fullback to Latrell again, number 35, and he is whacked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Mike Brown, the rover from Arizona. Big hit. So here's the situation facing the Sooners. You can see how many of them are injured, especially Parker. Now take a look at the total. The offensive total they have lost rushing 82% of their offense injured. And they come into today with J.T. Thatcher, a true freshman, and Seth Luttrell, a true freshman, and Dwight McKissick will back up Thatcher. He's a true freshman. Fuente back again. It's time, fires, incomplete at midfield. No penalty flags down on the play. And it is three and out. Makes you wonder how long John Blake will stay with Justin Fuente. We should see Brandon Daniels heal real soon. In fact, he's coming out on the hunt team. He's one of the real headhunters for the Sooner special team. Brian Shackelford punting. And Bobby Newcomb, a freshman back deep. Some even believe that he'll be a quarterback here eventually with the wind howling. Newcomb picks it up on the 18. There's a huge alley. 50 midfield lookout. He's gone. No, he's took down. Oh, I thought he had six for the Huskers. And down he went. I think this 54-yard punt out kicked the coverage. Great job by Newcomb. He has to avoid Jason Peter there. And I think Shevin Wigan got the tackle right here. Number five came over and tripped up his own man. First Certainly no white Huskers. shirt put a finger or a hand on Newcomb. Frost with the ball at the 27-yard line. Nebraska off a field goal, and Frost going to throw the swing to Amon Green. There's an alley open. First down at the 15-yard line on the pass play. Martin Chase makes the stop for the Sooners. This offensive line has the ability to run right at you with the power game, but what sets this line apart from a lot of offensive lines in the uh, in college is to watch how these guys get out in front of this screen. Anderson, number 70, with a good block there, and the tight end down the field as well. Sheldon Jackson. Wiggins is in the slot for Nebraska. Option, Amon Green, the pitch man's free. Down at the 11-yard line. He picked up four yards on that run. Mike Woods defending the play. This number here is just, just fantastic. 399 yards on the ground. Obviously number one in the NCAA. And Green is off to a good start with 27 yards so far on just five carries. Lance Brown, the receiver out to the right. Makabika back in at fullback. Sheetham is off to the left here on second down. Makabika straight ahead. And the ball down at the uh, six-yard line, Dad. Well, Brandon, talking to Frank Solis, the offensive coordinator, he said, you have got to pay attention to our fullback because Joel Makovica is a threat. He carries the ball about ten times a game, and he is the, uh, the leading average at seven yards per carry, and he's their first choice on this uh, type of option. Third down and one for the Huskers. Amon Green is stuffed. Didn't get it. The Sooners pound that hole, and the left side of the offensive line could not open it up. Again, it's the power play. Left side this time, and Oklahoma does a great job of stuffing the run. Their best defensive lineman is number 93, Martin Chase. Here is the fourth and close to two. This time, Osborne elects to go for it. They settle for a field goal last time. Frost option, pitch line, green for the corner. It's very close. Out right at the marker. 
Woods is all over the place defensively, along with Corey T. Ivy. You can see there they've got a first and goal. And I mean, just got it. And Amon Green really paid the price for it. See him going out of the ball game right now. But watch the team speed of the Sooners. Again, they string out the option all the way to the sidelines. Great job by Woods playing off the block right there of Lance Brown and the big hit coming in on Amon Green. Coral Buckhalter, the freshman Ibat, replaces Amon Green. Makabeka, the fullback. And Makabeka takes it in for the touch. He didn't have a touchdown, Nebraska. Wow. Nothing to it, huh? So with Amon Green over on the sideline, Osborne's coaching staff wants to put the ball in the hands of the veteran. Brown adds the extra point. We've got our first touchdown of this game. And with 9.26 to go in the first quarter, the Huskers have opened up a quick, and I mean quick, 10-point lead on the Sooners. your own little world. You're way up high, so you can see everything. It has lots of places to hide your treasures. It's roomy. It's cozy, with space for all your favorite things and your favorite people. It makes you feel like you're part of a club. Dodge Caravan. It's like a treehouse for grown-ups. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. My car gets fixed today. <laughs> <laughs> and my sink. <laughs> and my furnace. <laughs> and my lawnmower. What? You idiot. You're going to get us caught. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, Eddie! make it a Bud Light. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The new Dodge, it's about change. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. And the NASDAQ stock market. A 10-point lead for the top-ranked team in the nation. Set to determine it. And as the weather turns colder, this team always gets hotter. It's been that way under Osborne. Same location. Fielded on the 11 by Jackson. And down he goes in a hurry. Take a look at that uh, touchdown. Watch the block here by Aaron Taylor. And then watch the center, Josh Heskew. This offensive line is so athletic. That's a huge hole, and the fullback doesn't get touched until he's two yards in the end zone. Brandon Daniels, number eight, checks into the game. Moved from defense to offense prior to a week ago against K-State. An option whiz in high school out of Ada, Oklahoma. you will hand off to the running back. A conservative opening play here for Daniels, only a sophomore. And uh, Dan, how tough is it for Daniels to move over from defense to offense this late in the season? Well, he's lucky that he has an option background from high school. But, you know, he was a wide receiver last year. He played safety this year. He runs under kicks as a special teamer. But he's fast. He, he runs a legitimate 4-4, and he is 220 pounds. 
His natural ability will have to take over here. Second and eight. Huskers would expect that option look from Daniels. Brings it down the line to his left. Going to keep it. He's quick, but not quick enough. And he put it down. Ball is on the carpet. Nebraska signaling that they may have it at the 24-yard line. And Peter comes out with a football. Peter had wrapped it up. And the Sooners in trouble again. Well, this is a terrible way to start your afternoon for Daniels. Carrying the ball rather loosely. Looked like it was popped loose there. Mike Rucker was able to get in behind him and knock the ball free. And at the bottom of the pile, at some point, number 55, Jason Peter, out of Locust, New Jersey, came trotting out with the football. And Frost and the Huskers are threatening again. Amon Green checks back in. Frost throws. Ah, no, incomplete. For a moment, it appeared that Jeff Lake had grabbed it, but he could not hang on with Corey T. Ivey there defensively, the free safety. This is a good job by the quarterback, Frost, giving his six foot four wide receiver, Jeff Lake, a chance against the 5'10 Corey T. Ivey. It's a great job by Ivy stripping the ball loose as they both hit the ground. There is Peter. His brother, one time outstanding player here, who's now in the National Football League. Second down and 10. Option look, Amon Green looking to the left, and he's cut off. They'll spring it and knock him out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Nebraska can run the power at you and they can run the option game at you. They've had more success today just running straight at the Oklahoma Sooners. That option play has been well defensed by Oklahoma as they have one play down one player down on the field right now. They cannot afford any more injuries. This team has just been crushed by injuries. It's like Dale Allen number 84. Oh he is down. When you talk to Osborne, he likes to rave about this year's defense, especially the man, Jason Peter, we just saw recover the fumble. Let's listen in on the Nebraska coach. I think right now, Jason Peter is the best defensive lineman we've had here, and that would include some pretty good ones like Neil Smith and some guys that have gone on, John Perella and a number of others that are really great players. But in terms of playing the run, playing the pass, and just, you know, disrupting the other team's offense, Jason's playing great football. A year ago, I remember Jason Peter with a broken bone in his hand playing down the stretch for Coach McBride against Colorado. And then that losing effort against Texas. Did he reach you? That's saying a lot, too, when, you, when he calls, Tom Osborne calls Jason Peter the best defensive lineman. 25 years of some pretty good defensive linemen that have worn the black shirts of the Nebraska defense. 6'5, 285. There's a lot of talent scouts around the country. Better take note of that comment. Jason is a senior next to Foreman, another outstanding player. Remember now, this Nebraska team has back to back shutouts. They are working on their ninth consecutive scoreless quarter, and they lead it here 10 0. This is a team determined to protect the number one ranking, to hold off all of those great showdowns next week, to win at home, to go to Columbia, Missouri, and then, of course, eventually to Boulder, Colorado, and wind up in the Orange Bowl, where they would hope to play either Florida, Florida State, or even North Carolina should the Tar Heels come through next week and upset the Seminoles. And for Coach Blake, more problems at Oklahoma. Troubled times for the Sooners. Losing 10-0. A 37-point underdog. That's hard to believe. Third down and 11. Frost on a swing. And Amon Green fumbles it. He's knocked out of bounds. A beautiful hit delivered by Travian Smith out of Tatum, Texas. And Amon Green's got to go back to his quarterback and say, hey, please read the coverage before you throw me the ball. Quarterback has got to see Travian Smith. Frost uh, misread the linebacker coming up, putting up the huge hit. That's two big hits now on Amon Green in the first quarter. 
Chris Brown, who has made one field goal into this stiff breeze. This will be a good test for him. This is going to be a 42 yarder. This will not be easy into this win. Strong leg. He's a junior. And he whacks it beautifully. What a great leg. On top of everything else, they have got an outstanding kicker here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And when you're going after your third national championship in four years, that's not going to hurt at all. 13-0, Nebraska. We're in the first quarter. Let's take a look at our regional activity next week. We mentioned Nebraska, Missouri. One more covering. We also have Michigan against Penn State. Big shootout in the Big Ten. Stanford, USC in the Pac-10. Georgia Tech, Virginia coming your way in the ACC. And then, of course, ESPN will have West Virginia, Syracuse tonight. And that's a showdown with Alliance Bowl implications there. The Mountaineers and the Orangemen in Syracuse. Now well, Peters turnover. Responsible for three more points. They have dominated teams in the first half through today's first quarter. They've had pretty good field position to start their drives with too, Brent. Kansas State. That's a big loss for Texas Tech in the Big 12. Jackson. Fumble! Loose penalty flag. Sooners fall on the loose ball, but there is a penalty flag down at the 14-yard line. Jackson's going to have to get off that corner pretty soon. Illegal block on the part of the Sooners. It's turning from bad to worse, and it's only the first quarter. Look at all the red shirts. Nobody's blocked. Two guys right on the ball. Corey L. Ivey, number 43, saves the day momentarily for Oklahoma. And what's beautiful about the way Brown is kicking off, they've asked him to dump it into this corner, and he's done it every time. You know, the thing is, is that he's kicking against the wind. He just hit a 42-yarder into the teeth of the wind that uh, had it made it by plenty. Osborne and Frost talking about some of the option techniques, obviously, going over the defense that they're looking at on the field. Frost, a vastly improved quarterback. He's still not the great arm. He certainly is not Peyton Manning, but he's more than adequate, more than adequate in the system they run here in Lincoln. Wind at their back. Daniels option, fumbled last time, keeps it. Quick move, hit from behind and down at the 15-yard line. And Jack Aroot, What's up with the Oklahoma sideline right now? Well, Brent, John Blake went to his offense and gathered them around and tried very calmly to reassure them and get them calmed down. He said, guys, you're playing very, very tight. And he tried to break it down in simplistic terms. He said, you've got to put a few plays together simply to give our defense a rest. Luttrell is the lone running back. Nothing doing. He keeps twisting for perhaps a yard. Third down and three. John Saunders, my friend. How good is Toledo? Very good indeed. Just ask the rest of the Mac on this Burger King update. Miami facing them today. 24 seconds left. Chris Wallace, 11 yards to Brock Kreisberg. They go for the two-point conversion and pull off the victory, remaining unbeaten. 35 to 28, the final there. Brent. All right, John. And here. It's 13-0, the top-ranked Huskers. Oklahoma with a third and two now. Daniels option. Here's the pitch for the first down. And out of bounds at the 27-yard line. So the Sooners pick up a first down. That is their first first down of this game and it came with 624 to go in the opening quarter and check out the block on the outside by Seth Luttrell couple of true freshmen playing here that's a beautiful block and now a beautiful move by Thatcher and the first first down you know what Jack said about uh, the offense it, it is important they're lucky they're not down 21 nothing Daniels they pound away with Latrell again. Get a report from the sideline, Dan. They have lost another player. Allen done for the day because of an injured knee. 
Second down and eight. Yeah, and playing these two uh, and three true freshmen in the backfield, Dick Winder said, you know, as coaches, they need to be positive. Don't get down on uh, uh, losing all these players to injury. Here's Daniel rolling. They push him back inside. Beautifully defended by number 22, Ralph Brown, the sophomore corner who grew up last year in a hurry because everyone, and I mean everyone, was throwing at him when they came to play the Huskers. Watch how he defends this play, does not give up the outside, and just forced him back into the inside. Watch how well this is defended. Well, but the problem is here, Brent, is that Daniels is coming out running the whole way. There is no threat of the forward pass at all by the quarterback. Third down and three. Daniels option other side wants to keep it himself. And he is whacked at the 38-yard line, close to a first down. Mike Brown, the rover, making that hit for the Huskers. You gotta, you gotta like uh, Brandon Daniels' style. He's not playing like a guy that hasn't played a whole lot. Good job here by Steven Alexander on the corner here, pinning in Mike Rucker. Great block by the tight end that time. He's one of the highly rated tight ends in college football as Allen, done for the day, heads off to the Sooners locker room and it's a fresh set of downs. So consecutive first downs for Brandon Daniels, the sophomore from Ada. And there is Steven Alexander, 6'3", 238. Chickasha, Oklahoma, a good one. Daniels, good fake. McFarland coming, throws high, got his man. 11 yards on a completion out of bounds far side Maurice Little receives the pass from Daniels his name may be little but he's six foot three and he's gonna need all of it on this throw by Daniels who is now one for one in his college career as a quarterback we've only seen a handful of plays but Daniels uh, looks like uh, he could be a good one under Dick Winder he gives them a lot of uh, options. Primarily the option play itself. Now McBride's got the black shirts ready. Thatcher is the pitch man. Fumble! Sooners have got it again. Tony Ortiz, the sophomore linebacker. And there is a yellow flag, face mask, and it goes against the Sooners after the recovery and you know who made the big hit Brent it's Grant Wistrom number 98 as he hit the quarterback from behind here he is top of the screen right here watch on the option as Daniels comes down and hesitates just a moment here and boom gets blasted by the backside there another AstroTurf hop there is the face mask grab by Steven Alexander. Face mask after the fumble against Oklahoma. 15-yard penalty. First down. Dan, it is clear that McBride. It is clear that McBride has, you will suit him. has told Wistrom and the rest of the black shirts on defense for Nebraska to come in behind Daniels on the option when you get a chance and try to knock it out. That is. Twice, and I can remember another time when they were chasing hard from the backside to try to get after it. They've seen something, and they think that ball is loose in his hands when they come up. Buck Halter, now the eye back. Full back to the 25 yard line for three yards. Martin Chase makes the stop. Makovica, the ball carrier. There's an idea of what they've accomplished two field goals and a touchdown and a 13 0 lead. See that 28 there? Yeah, that says 28. Excuse my uh, penmanship, but that's where they started this drive. Three fumbles that just killed Oklahoma. Here's Buck Halter. Twist for a couple of yards. Injuries in that backfield for Nebraska. And so Buck Alter, a freshman, 6'2", 210, is forced to back up Amon Green today. Amon Green has already rushed for better than 1,000 yards, and it will be third and four. And they want to give uh, Green more rest as the season goes along because he's a back that is a speed back and needs to get a blow every now and then if his speed and his quickness is going to be maintained throughout the entire four quarters. Jeff Lake 
Kenny Cheatham and Lance Brown, the wide outs. Frost keeps it himself for the first down. So a special coming your way on Monday night. A couple of big interviews on Primetime Live with Iron Mike Tyson and Michael Jordan. Then, of course, it'll be the Steelers and the Chiefs coming up after that. And we should mention that that interview took place before Tyson uh, was injured in the motorcycle accident. So 2.56 to go, 13-0. Huskers with the lead. There's the option, pitch to Buckhalter's, got the corner, touchdown! Made it in, a late signal because the official was down, but once Buckhalter, the freshman, grabbed the corner, he was headed for six. We're talking about all the true freshmen for Oklahoma. Well, Buckhalter is one as well. That's his fifth touchdown of the year. Great block by Joel McAvicka. Put him in the corner. This one could get ugly. The option look from the Huskers. The pitch to the freshman. Eyes the block, seizes the corner. It's 20 to nothing. Timeout. When we spread the wheels out a bit, moved the windshield forward a tad, lowered the step up height a skosh, and widened the aisle a smidgen, we created a caravan with 32 more cubic feet of room. It's remarkable what a few alterations will do. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. My name is Anda Andre, Director of Design for Ian Schroeder Hotels. I direct the creative effort of building all the hotels. We are our worst competition, so we just have to keep up with ourselves. Because in the end, you are always judged by your last project, and the next one has to be better than before. I say, okay, what's your email? And when they say, we don't have any, I say, you don't. You need to know what's going on in order to know where you want to be. What used to take, like, sometimes a week, two weeks in the library and trying to find out things, now it's like 10 minutes done. As long as you have to be competitive in the world you are living in, anything that helps, you should get. It's 20 nothing, and we're still in the first quarter here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Chris Brown set to kick it off. He's kicked everything over to his right. Jackson is backed up at the five, trying to come out again, and they close in in a hurry, and down he goes. Closer and closer to the end zone. Grant Wistrom, the senior from Webb City, Missouri. Forced that fumble. Backside again. And a proud father, Ron Wistrom, watching today. Keeping the binoculars on his son defensively to see what he's going to come up with next. First down for the Sooners. 2.34 here in the opening quarter. Daniels uses the fullback Latrell. Big hole on that counter move. And Seth Latrell off the counter. This is the third. Let me check something. This is the third quarterback being used today by the Sooners. This is the junior Eric Moore. Number three. So this is how bad it's gotten for Oklahoma football. Two minutes left in the opening quarter. Trailing Nebraska 20 to nothing. And this is the third quarterback that the Sooners have used in this game. Hard running that time. Going to be close to a first down. Smile on Frost's face already. 
Some pretty good action in the pit here. Look at Alexander working against Wistrom that time. Talked about hard running. There's hard blocking as well, Brent. Moore brings the Sooners up. Left-handed thrower wants the sideline jump ball in. Complete, and that was defended that time by number 22 of the Corn Huskers, and that is Ralph Brown. Let's go down to Jack Aroot. Hey, Brent, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in college football, well, it's real simple. All you have to do is go to America Online, and keyword is ABC Sports. You'll get it all. And I'll tell you what, Brent, if you want to know the inside scoop, I do a column every week. A lot of lies, a lot of good stuff, too. All right. Jack, we'll check that out for you, partner. Second down and 10. Minute and a half. More on a pitch. Thatcher to the 34-yard line, and he holds on to the ball tightly for eight yards. So it will be actually closer to nine, it appears. Yeah, you know, so who's having a pretty good game is the fullback, Seth Luttrell. He's been running the ball hard up the middle, but watch him right there, the right side of the screen. He's going to get another good block that gives Thatcher a little bit of running room. Close to another first down. 105 to go in the opening quarter in Lincoln. Jackson's the wide receiver out to the left. Moore straight ahead for the first down. Maurice Little. The senior flanker brings the play in from the Sooners sideline. Gerald Williams also checks in, number 10. Final seconds of the opening stanza ticking away. Eric Moore, the junior. Hands to the tailback for about a yard and that's about it. Jason Peter in on still another stop. Steven Alexander the tight end brings the play into the huddle. difference in the game and the end of our first quarter the Cornhuskers the top ranked team in the nation have now recorded nine consecutive scoreless quarters in this streak alone remember back to back shutouts and now they have shut out Oklahoma with Buckhalter going in for one of their two touchdowns but it has been the black shirt defense forcing three turnovers that set the pace. We'll be right back. Michael Jordan is CEO Jordan. Half time at the United Center with the Bulls leading 62. <laughs> Mr. Shane. Sir, Mr. Knight. For the SAP. ASAP. Proceed. Mr. Jordan. Approved. Proceed. Authorized. Denied. Give me the Nikkei clothes and the Detroit score. Double mesh. 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 Make the logo bigger. Jordans. 
It's your own little world. You're way up high, so you can see everything. It has lots of places to hide your treasures. It's roomy. It's cozy, with space for all your favorite things and your favorite people. It makes you feel like you're part of a club. Dodge Caravan. It's like a treehouse for grown-ups. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. Nebraska tried today to hand the winningest coach in the nation, Tom Osborne, victory number 250. 25 years, 10 victories a year. Been pretty hip there, too, huh, with the shades on? He says that the, uh, the biggest thing about that streak is that he's been here a long time. That must mean that I've done a good job. Whisper so. at right defensive end. Gets down in the three-point stance, number 98. Looking in at Moore. They blitz, it's picked up, and they finally get the ball in the hands of their very talented tight end, Steven Alexander, and he shows that time why he's one of the best in the country. First time that Oklahoma has crossed midfield to the Huskers, 45-yard line. Just the uh, Sooners' second completion of the day goes for 18 yards. And Moore may be the guy that uh, will play and be most effective today because they're going to have to throw the ball and they're going to have to run the option. He does both. Latrell's the running back. Here's the pitch fumble again. And Moore recovered it himself. And our referee, Hal Dowden, is right on top of it. This pitch is a, a little bit low. And I don't think Latrell had his eye on it the entire way. That's a big play by Eric Moore to get on that fumble. There is Dowden, folks. He's an undertaker. <laughs> and he's just told Oklahoma those fumbles are killing you. Okay. <laughs> I might take an aggravation for using that line. I'm telling you, folks. Second down and 17. That line was so bad that Oklahoma had to call timeout. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nebraska is saying this is new meaning to we're going to bury it. We'll be right back. Traditional luxury cars, the slumber, the serenity, the isolation. Hey, you're not dead yet. Presenting the supercharged Bonneville, one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. May traditional luxury rest in peace. Luxury with attitude. The Bonneville by Pontiac. National Car Rental, we believe that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Let's go. Who's really number one? Number two, Penn State battles Michigan. Plus number one, Nebraska's at Missouri. Or other regional action next Saturday. Three fifty-three left in the second quarter with Dan Fouts and Jack Aroon. I'm Brad Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. The third largest city in Nebraska on game day. A sea of red. The warmest, nicest setting that you'd ever imagine in college football. It is second down and 17 for Eric Moore, the third Oklahoma quarterback of the game. They trail the top-ranked team 20 to nothing. The Huskers back out of a blitz. It's a four-man rush. Wisdom's all over. Fumble on the ground. Nebraska goes for it at the 40-yard line. 
Grant Wistrom came out of the starting blocks that time and just ate him up. Folks, it was no contest. And Dad could put the binoculars away because his son is putting the Sooners away. Wistrom with the sack, the forced fumble, and the fumble recovery. He has to get out underneath his own man, Kelsey, to get on the ball. Four turnovers, and now the Huskers operate with the wind at their back. Scott Frost, play fake, middle, fires, touchdown, Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb, the freshman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who was born in Africa, hauls it in for a quick six. And he hammers in another extra point. It is 27 to nothing. If you want to beat Wistra and the Huskers this year, you better invite them to your building. Are you listening, Gators? A lot of people my age set off on cruises around the world. Now, I set off on a second career. Hi, guys. Of course, my Dean Witter Broker's impeccable investment advice prepared me for any sort of retirement I chose. And I chose to start over with a business of my own. Wait a minute. Are you sure you're old enough to be here? <laughs> That's my idea of a fascinating adventure. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. So then Doris is driving it, and she says, but Elliot, I can't feel the road. And I said, but what do you expect? It's a luxury car. Anyway, we then drive it down the road. Have you ever driven down Bored with traditional luxury? It could be time for the supercharged Bonneville, one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. Do you drive a luxury car, Frank? You bet your ascot I do. Luxury with attitude. The Bonneville by Pontiac. Professional builders, people who make a living with their tools, prefer to buy their tools at the Home Depot more than any other store in America. And whether it's the selection, the quality brands we offer, or our guaranteed commitment to the lowest prices, we think it's a pretty powerful argument for why you should shop here too. The Home Depot, where people who know their stuff buy their stuff. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Burger King, where you get your burgers worth. Circuit City, answers in every department, low prices all over the store. The legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. And State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Happy Halloween, everybody. We found somebody who likes your lines. Third <laughs> team. 28 to go in the opening half, and it's 27 nothing. It'll be interesting to see which quarterback will come out for Oklahoma now. 20. Well, you've got to stick with somebody. Even if they start turning the ball over, you've got to let them have all three of them a fumble. Opportunity. This one's going out of the end zone. No question. Ron Wistrom watching from the stands as his son lights up more Fuente and Daniels. We have a mic. Take a listen on that last play by his son. Oh, Uh, happy father watching that time and you could see that Grant can't remember one quarter for the next he was signaling the other direction ever so briefly and Daniels returns as the OU quarterback hard running Latrell on a counter 
out to the 32-yard line. We ship you to New York and John Saunders. John, these Huskers are something, partner. They are indeed, but Ohio State is showing they have some strong plays as well. Here's a block punt. Edinger has it blocked. It's picked up by Gary Berry, who returns it for the touchdown. He also had an interception return for a touchdown, so the Buckeyes lead now 17 to 6. Brent, back to you. All right, John, thank you. The Bucks need some help if they want to get back to Pasadena, having lost that tough one to Penn State earlier this year. First and 10 for the Sooners. Latrell pounded by number 98. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, touchdown, the third touchdown pass of the year by Scott Frost, 40 yards after the play fake. Watch as he just floats this ball and lets the wind just carry it to the hands of his wide receiver. Newcomb is a real talent playing wide receiver now. And he could someday again wind up at quarterback. There are the points of the four turnovers for Oklahoma. They've given up 20 of the 27. JT Thatcher back in. Daniel's going to give the lead pitch. It's on the ground and out of bounds. <laughs> this team is just totally intimidated by the defense of Nebraska. They can't block the defensive line, and now the quarterbacks, each of them has fumbled. This is a terrible pitch by Daniels. Looks at the last minute. And Thatcher had no idea when the ball was coming, where it was going. Young man being asked to do an awful lot. Wide receiver a season ago. Then they switched him to safety. Then during the year, they move him to quarterback. That's asking a lot at this level, especially against this defensive unit. Third down and 17. Now, if you're going to commit to an offensive style, you've got to commit to a player. Daniels want to keep it, and he ain't going to get any time at all. And that was Peter breaking through. So if it's not 98, it's 55 coming to get you. You better have an offensive line if you're going to stick with this team this year. This is some operation. This is no blocking. Look at that. I mean, Peter is in on the quarterback on a three-step drop by the time that third foot hits the ground. And the punter is back, Brian Shackelford. That's Newcomb, who was back in the middle, and all three of them will let this one roll dead at the 48-yard line. So against that breeze, that punt was held up. And a reminder that tomorrow we will televise the final round of the Tour Championship from down in Houston. Duval, Love, Faxon, and Glasson are all tied at eight under par. So there is a four-way tie for the lead right now going into the richest purse on the PGA Tour tomorrow here on ABC. First down and 10. Amon Green returns as the eye back. He's lined up behind Makovica. Frost is the quarterback coming off that touchdown pass moments ago. A 27-point Husker lead. Makovica, the first man. And this one did not surprise Oklahoma. They were ready for him. But again, Makovica has not lost a yard yet this year. Let's see where they put this down. He has not given up yardage, and he didn't that time either. He battled for one yard that time. That is hard to believe that a fullback in that situation has not been caught for a loss of yardage yet this year. Second down and nine coming up for the Huskers. Two, two, two. Scott Frost, just an entirely different quarterback than we saw him at the end of the season, bringing the option down. There's the wing back around on the option, and a fancy move gets him by on the outside. Newcomb. Wow, what a dash he showed when he was trapped back there by the Sooners, and he got away. He had a huge run last week against Kansas that was called back. He talked about McAvicka not losing any yardage. Watch the moves here by Newcomb as he just uh, loses. Daryl Bright right there, and it gets around the linebacker. All the way for a gain of one. Which one-yard run did you like better, Brent? McAvickas or Newcombs? I know who would I vote for. Newcombs starting to remind me of a young, uh, what was that fellow's name? Tommy Fraser. Was that his fellow's name? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Oh. Third down at eight. And Frost is happy to have him around. Scott going to throw to the tight end coming inside on a bit of a screen there that time. And that was Jeff Lake. Let me check that. The split in coming in. Well, one of the things that Frost told us is he has a lot more confidence this season in his ability. I definitely have a lot more confidence this year. I think uh, the whole team has more confidence, especially offense, and uh, I'm just part of that. Um, I think there's no substitute for experience, and the year, year of experience I got last year has done wonders for me this year. Indeed it has. Jesse Cush comes in to punt. This is his first punt of the day. And Jackson, who's been pounded regularly on those kickoff returns, is back. Signals for a fair catch on a run up. Now let it bounce. And then after signaling for the fair catch, he wasn't too sure what you can do with a bouncing punt, and he lets it roll. So the Big 12 here in the north, no question about Nebraska rolling toward the Big 12 championship game early in December down in San Antonio in the Alamo Dome, but it is really up in the air down in the south. K State with a big one over Texas Tech today. 13 to the final. Remember, Kansas State has already lost to Nebraska. And Baylor beating a troubled Texas program today. Kansas over Iowa State. Brandon Daniels. Hands it off for the Sooners. And Latrell down at the 25 yard line. Picked up three yards. It's really not surprising that Latrell's having a good day and, and Thatcher's running the ball well. They're true freshmen, but as a running back, it's really not that big of an adjustment from high school to uh, the college level as far as just natural ability. You're running the ball, you, there's not a lot of thinking involved. You just go out there and do what comes naturally. Second down. And this will leave them with about a third and five coming up here. McFarland, who set up a touchdown with a fumble recovery, makes the stop. And Brandon Daniels is obviously the quarterback of the future for Oklahoma, and he is probably going to be called upon today to play the rest of the day, I would suspect, because here you're already down 27 to nothing. You're committed now to the option offense. Might as well give a young man the experience. Jason Freeman. And Jackson back into the game. Maurice Little is outside him. On third down, Daniels keeps it. Did not fool number 21, Mike Brown. And if Mike Brown wasn't going to get a big number 98, Wistrom was. But again, it's a run all the way. You know, you'd like to give the quarterback the option, give him a receiver to throw the ball to if the safety comes up like Brown did that time. But that's strictly a running play for Oklahoma. Shackelford standing at the Oklahoma 11-yard line. Newcomb would dearly love to run up on one and set sail. Got to get it off. It's blocked. Man coming up the middle on it. Forced this one out of bounds. It's like Josh or Kyle Vandenbosch, Brent, came right up the middle and laid out and made the block. Check out what the penalty flag's all about. So they will sort it out as things go from bad to worse for Oklahoma. We have a dead ball. Ball start on the kicking team. We'll put replay fourth down. Oh, what a break. What a break for Oklahoma. Oh, man. Well, maybe their luck's turning here a little bit. It couldn't get much worse. They're offsides. That nullifies the play. It's before the ball is snapped. A dead ball foul. And that's the uh, <laughs> best penalty ever called against Oklahoma. So Shackelford. Shackelford. 
They might block this one too. He's standing on the OU six. Here they come, and he does get it off. Newcomb on the second bounce, can't get away down at the 45 yard line. So Scott Frost and the offense will come back to work with Nebraska, the number one team in the nation, leading Oklahoma 27 to zip. Timeout. If you ever end up in some Ben-Hur movie, in your Pontiac Sunfire GT, with its powerful twin cam engine, well, you'll be glad you have a quick handling sports suspension. And of course, 150 horses. The Pontiac Sunfire GT. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. The University of Oklahoma is on the move. We're building the largest university-based natural history museum in the world. And with students from over 100 countries, we're creating an international study center to prepare our students to live and work in the global community. OU ranks number one in the nation per capita of all public universities and the number of National Merit Scholars on our campus. Watch us. You'll be hearing a lot more about the University of Oklahoma. The University of Nebraska ranks number one in the nation for graduating academic All-Americans in football, women's volleyball, in fact, all sports put together. And our honors program attracts some of the country's highest scoring freshmen in fields like physics, computer science, biology, chemistry, and math. So you have an interesting known value for N. There is no place like Nebraska. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ABC Sports. Defensive tackle Jason Peter now has accounted for almost 40 tackles on the front line this season. He's a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year around the country, and he figures to be the number one defensive tackle drafted by the NFL. Scott Frost coming off a 100 yard rushing day a week ago, back in to run the offense. Here he is on the option, keeps it, and Frost busts a tackle and breaks out. 30 down the sideline. Pushed out of bounds, Scott Frost. The ball is going to be marked at the 30-yard line where he first stepped out of bounds. You know, Brett, not only did he have a beautiful run here, the most impressive thing here is watch him knock over the tacklers. Three guys go down right there. What a great run. He's got a figure out where the sideline is though. So he ran out of bounds about 10 yards up the field before the contact. Now he's so probably, surprised, huh? He probably doesn't figure to be, you know, a starting flashy quarterback in the NFL, but someone's gonna take him because he says, I'll play special teams, I'll do anything to get a chance in the NFL. And here he is, pitching the ball. And Bobby Newcomb, now a running back, a return man, a wide receiver. A running back and perhaps a future quarterback. He can do it all out of New Mexico, Bobby Newcomb. Well, watch the option play, and Newcomb is the receiver on this end of this one from the wing back. Great blocking down the field by the wide receivers, and the Huskers are just relentless. Makavica and Amon Green are directly behind. Frost, Frost brings it again. Dips back outside, goes for the corner. Here's the speed, dives the pylon. Just missed it by a yard. He said I had it, but the official will mark it at the one. Well, I think the officials blew this one. He hit the pylon with the ball on the inside of the pylon. That means the ball crossed the goal line, and that should be a touchdown. There's a conference down there. One of the officials may have seen it. Watch him stretch out with the left hand here at the end of the run. It's a touchdown. They've changed the call. You're exactly right. He got the pylon. Now the ball clearly will break the plane as he sticks it in his left hand and totally sells out for the pylon. 
There it is. Touchdown, Nebraska. Looking for victory number 250. And he will do it in 25 years. Joe Paterno needed three years longer than that. Chris Brown for the extra point. Pounds it through. Perhaps the most improved quarterback in the country. Drafted by Stanford, Bill Walsh had him at safety. He came back home to play at Nebraska. They moved him back to quarterback. He replaced Tommy Frazier. He didn't satisfy the faithful a year ago because Nebraska was upset by Arizona State on a Saturday night down in Tempe. Then they lost the Big 12 championship game to Texas on a Jack, on a John McAvick gamble as coach of the Longhorns. But Frost hung with it, accepted the criticism, and he is back as a warrior this year. And now he has the Cornhuskers stalking another national championship. And you know the big thing, Brent, is the fact that he went into Washington, University of Washington Husky Stadium, and he beat the Huskies. And that's not an easy thing to do. The Huskies are one of the best teams in the nation. And at that point, there was a lot of questions about this Cornhusker team and about number seven. Well, since that game, there haven't been any questions at all. 26 seconds. That's how long it took Nebraska to go 54 yards for this touchdown. Chris Brown to pound another one. This one he wants returned. And it'll be Jackson again. Jackson has an alley right side. 30 out to the 36-yard line. Well, we've talked about the criticism of Scott Frost, and we asked him how he was able to handle it so well and come back stronger than ever. Well, criticism, I think, is something that comes naturally with the quarterback position. I don't care how good you are, how many years you've played well, anything. Uh, you know, if, if you have a few down games, you're going to be criticized. I've even seen, you know, guys like Dan Marino getting criticized this year, and that, you know, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the history of football. I think when that, those kind of things happen, you just have to, uh, most of all, keep confidence in yourself. Uh, maybe turn to the people that you care about, your family, uh, and they'll stick with you. And, and if you fight your way through it, you're going to be a better guy in, in the end. Eric Moore back in at quarterback. Dan Fouts, you were subject to some criticism, and I know you had a little talk with him about it. What's your feeling about the criticism of the quarterbacking position and how he's handled it? Well, you just I think he's done a great job with it. He's, he's just put it behind him. He's blocked it out, and he's concentrated on how to become a better football player. And really, the only way to sway public opinion is by your performance. And his performance at uh, Husky Stadium up in Seattle really convinced me and all these people wearing red that he is the star quarterback for this football team. He's thrown for a touchdown, passed for another, and meanwhile, the black shirts just keep pounding away. Let's get more on uh, Scott Frost. You know, Jack, you and I have talked about him, and it's an interesting family, and uh, we're happy for the young man. Well, Brett, finally, Scott Frost has got a sense of humor as well. You know, he really had a problem, as you guys have recounted. But when the media asked him some questions after last week's 35 to nothing game, First, they asked him, well, what was it like to win that game 35 to nothing? He says, well, you know, it's a lot like painting your house pink. When the paint goes on, you're not real happy, but you get the paint on, and at least the job's done. And he, he's got that kind of sense of humor now, so uh, he's starting to lighten up a little bit, Brent. Here's third and 19, Jack. Sooner's under pressure again. Not going to get it with this play. J.T. Thatcher, the freshman, pounded at the 30-yard line. And the Sooners are forced to punt. You know, the rivalry is coming to an end with this game. And I know one sideline that's delighted about the fact that they don't have to play these guys for a while. Osborne wanted to call down and see if he could convince Oklahoma because of the rotation of the Big 12. You know, play him a preseason game. Have a non-conference anything to keep it going. But Oklahoma said, no, I think we'll take a couple years off and we'll see you down the road, Tommy. <laughs> Good decision yeah, by Oklahoma. Yeah, I think so. But boy, there have been some great moments. When you think back to the glory years, this punk's going to roll dead. It'll be down at the 41. I've been here for some of the great games. 1987, OU came in here, coached by Barry Switzer. They were number two. Nebraska was number one. First quarter, remember this? Keith Jones from 25 yards out, and the Huskers led it by this touchdown at the half. But then in the third quarter, 
Patrick Collins. 65 yards. Boomer Sooner. Oklahoma took a 14-7 lead. Went on to win 17-7. And for Sooner fans right now, that must seem like a million years ago in this rivalry. 502, 34-0. And yes, to the 32-yard line, Lance Brown, the junior wingback. And Nebraska keeps pounding away. This is unbelievable pass. I guess when you're hot, you're hot. Good pass protection, but this ball should have never been thrown. He zips it by three white shirts. Cedric Stevens, number seven, never saw the ball as it went right by his ear to the receiver, Lance Brown. When I said Nebraska was favored by 37, I didn't mean the first half. It's 34 nothing. It's 447 to go, and the Huskers are stocking another one. They're inside the 35-yard line. The options, Makovica, a walk-on fullback. Both he and his brother walked on. When you think of the walk-on program, Dan, it doesn't get any better than the one right here in Lincoln. And the fullbacks are the walk-on guys. It's a real tradition here in Lincoln. And here's Makovica. And the thing I want you to watch at the end of this play is the quarterback, Scott Frost, number seven, right there, taking a shot. At an, at an Oklahoma defensive back. He doesn't quite have that quarterback mentality, does he, Brent? No, indeed. That's why he'll do anything in the NFL if he gets a chance. Come on, Green's free. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line. First down for the Huskers. Terry White, the safety, pushing him out of bounds. This could be an ugly, ugly locker room at the intermission. This is a very, very disappointed Oklahoma team right now. And they're totally intimidated and being outplayed, out hit, out hustled. And we may see uh, seven or eight more walk ons for Nebraska before this afternoon's over. Blake looking at the clock, trying to get it to run faster. Green the eye back. Frost. And here's a mine cutting quickly to the left. Dan, what's your opinion of a mind green? He's already rushed for over a thousand yards. Uh, how do you evaluate it? Well, the thing that I've seen this year is that he's playing a lot tougher. And, and I think it's because of the great competition here at Nebraska. You know, we've seen Buckhalter. Uh, we haven't seen Jay Sims or a couple other tailbacks. But these guys know that they got to stay in the game. And that's one thing he talked to us about yesterday in Lawrence Phillips. He said that he learned from Lawrence Phillips that when you are the eye back here in Nebraska, you want to play every play because the guy behind you is pretty darn good. Yeah, both Sims and Evans out with injuries. Here is that option, and Frost keeps it and slams to the six-yard line. Ball game. So it'll be third down coming up for Nebraska with 3.12 to go in the first half, and the Huskers up 34-0. It's like a fast break offense. When Nebraska gets rolling, they seem to be coming downhill. I hope some of you basketball fans had an opportunity to watch what Rick Pitino has done with the Boston Celtics. Got a bunch of youngsters, used a 10 or 11 man rotation against Chicago last night, and it was a thing of beauty. 245, 34 nothing. Stuffed. Nothing doing. Nate, perhaps the five yard line. So it's fourth down coming up. And uh, John. That's another huge decision right now for Tom Osborne. Does he go for the fourth down play or does he kick the field goal? Just think back to the early years. How many times Osborne lost to Switzer? It was always sooner magic, one year after another. But they. Long ago, lost their magician. And now, it is simply the Huskers, and he's going to go here on fourth and two. Makaveka is set in front of Amon Green. Frost is going to roll hard to the right. Going to throw for it, deflected Oklahoma ball. There's Chase, number 93. He's a good one. Daryl Bright was also there, number 95. See which one deflects this. 
It's a surprising call. They've been able to run the ball extremely well today. There's the play right there. It was Bright, the freshman defensive end, who deflects the pass. As a courtesy to Husker fans, say you what ball centers are located outside the East and West Stadium entrances. Say you want to invite you to pass the 147. And the Sooners are coming out from the six yard line. Eric Moore hands it off. Let's check in with John Saunders and see what's coming up at halftime. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, the day's scores and highlights. Number one, Nebraska's rolling against Oklahoma. Now, Florida State looks good. Michigan and Penn State both win today, setting up a huge matchup next week in State College. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. And John and Todd, we look forward to that. Here it is, Nebraska rolling toward what would be its 41st consecutive win here in Lincoln. That would put them up number five on the all-time list. 107. Penalty flag. Penalty flag thrown on the play by the linesman at the 10-yard line that time. So referee Dowden will get the crew together. And it is against the Huskers. Final minute coming up here in the first half. 34 nothing. Turnovers have been the story of this game, and the Sooners have put it on the carpet four times. Missouri beating Colorado. Missouri would be hosting Nebraska next week in Columbia. What a job Corby Jones is doing at quarterback. That team picking off Oklahoma State. Mo Anke's defense stopping that two-point play. There's Luttrell. Slams to the 26-yard line. Half minute to go now. and. Uh, Dan, is this your first trip into this stadium, Joe? Oh, I, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up, Brent. <laughs> no, no, no. I was uh, oh, here back in 1971. Uh huh. I was a member of the Oregon Ducks. So we opened the season uh, uh -huh. with the Corn Huskers, and uh, they had 34 points that day as well. Uh huh. We held them down to 34. <laughs> of course, uh, I led our team to all of seven. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, pal. <laughs> but, well, out of bounds. At the 26 Stop yard line. line. Yeah, I, I look back on it. It's a heck of an accomplishment, you know? <laughs> exactly. They went undefeated that year. I bet they go undefeated this year, too. I don't think there's a team anywhere that represents a state quite like this one does. It is amazing. These fans flock here on game day. And there is a legend as far as they're concerned. The offensive lineman flinched for Oklahoma. Yeah, they're going to have a huge celebration here at the end of this ball game. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball, start ball start on the offense. Still second down. And commemorating Tom Osborne's 250th anniversary. They got fireworks and they're going to give him the game ball and all those nice things. He can get started on those fireworks at halftime, buddy. <laughs> 36 consecutive winning seasons. That means that that man has never experienced a losing year. That's just amazing, isn't it? He's never lost more than three games in any one year. That's the, it's more amazing, I think. Final 15 seconds. Five-yard line, stuck by McFarlane and Mike Brown. Thatcher, the freshman running back. That's going to do it. The first half comes to an end, and Nebraska shows everyone why they are the top-ranked team in the nation. 34-0. The Huskers lead the Sooners.
It's so powerful, it's almost scary. Boo. The muscle car lives. The new Trans Am by Pontiac. Think we're ready? 30 run-throughs? Yeah. Room 708 wants to win the account that will make him famous. Room 610 wants to fix the typo she just found. Room 315 wants to iron his meeting clothes, including his socks. Room 412 wants a pizza. Business Services by Marriott. When you're comfortable, you can do anything. This little light of mine. Born black and a woman at a time when it paid to be neither. She became the first black woman to serve in the Texas Senate, then the first from the South elected to Congress. My faith in the Constitution is whole, it is complete, it is total. With her grit and determination, Barbara Jordan inspired a nation. I have finally been included, and we the people. State Farm salutes life heroes because State Farm understands life. The Document Company, Xerox. Valvoline, halftime 97, brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Welcome, those of you watching Ohio State, Michigan State, and Oklahoma, Nebraska. The second half still to come, but right now the big story on the day. Nebraska is number one. Tom Osborne, though, going for a career win, number 250 at Nebraska. He'd be the fastest man to get there, taking just 301 games. He got the victory today, and confident reasons to think they should be. Scott Frost to Bobby Newcomb, 40 yards for the touchdown. It was 27-0 at that point. This was a blowout last year. The year before that, it is again. Well, you can't turn the ball over against a team like Nebraska. 20 Nebraska points off of Oklahoma turnovers. Four fumbles for the Sooners in the first half. And because it's now the Big 12, this rivalry won't be played again until the year 2000. Oklahoma's probably happy about that. NC State against Florida State. Mike O'Kane leading his squad onto the field in what would be a tough game. Florida State but only allowed one touchdown in three games at home this year. Thad Busby, 32 yards to Jermaine Stringer to the end zone for the touchdown. It was 19 zip at that point. Thad Busby already with three touchdown passes, 27 to 7 is a look here. And there's Busby, what he's done thus far. Busby has had a great year, had to fight off the competition in the preseason, has had a great season as a senior year, and Travis Miner really starting to emerge as a running back for Florida State. Now, next week on what we're calling Judgment Day here on ABC and ESPN, on ESPN, it'll be that Florida State North Carolina game. You saw North Carolina this week. You did the game on Thursday against Georgia Tech. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, I think North Carolina is the only team in the ACC that has the athletes that are capable of lining up and playing against Florida State. They can play with them physically. The big question, are they mentally tough enough, really nasty enough, to beat Florida State? We'll find out early in that first quarter of the ball game next week. The other thing that gives North Carolina a little bit of an edge in this game, Oscar Davenport has the mobility to make plays when things break down. Last year, Florida State sacked Chris Keldorf eight times. They won't be able to get to Davenport quite so easily. All right, it is part of Judgment Day next Saturday on ABC and ESPN, 7.30 Eastern Time, North Carolina and Florida State. More on the games on ABC a little bit later. Florida facing Georgia. In this one, the Gators perhaps expected to struggle. Florida, after that loss, marching their way towards the SEC championship, but Georgia comes out fired out of a can, and Robert Edwards with two touchdown runs. Well, quarterback Doug Johnson is out of Spurrier's doghouse, but still on a very short leash. Two <laughs> interceptions. He may not see much more time in the second half if he doesn't get it going for the Gator. The leash may be yanked, in fact. Washington against USC. Brock Heward having a great year, 35 yards to Fred Pullman here. A terrific catch, outstretched and bouncing to the end zone. 10 nothing at that point. With Sean Sheehy sprained his knee in the first half. He is out for the game, but Washington has the lead. A lot of weapons for Washington offensively. You take a look at Brock Hewitt 
on the year now, 18 touchdowns, only three interceptions, very efficient with the football. And Brock Hewitt has just thrown another touchdown pass to Payton, so they are rolling in that game. Ohio State against Michigan State. Both teams trying to stay in the hunt for the Rose Bowl. Michigan State's punter is blocked by Marcel Willis. Gary Berry recovers this one. And it's a touchdown, 17 to 3. Gary Berry also had an interception return for a touchdown. When Michigan State lost to Michigan last week, it was interceptions, turnovers. You can't beat good football teams turning the ball over. Lock punt and an interception really working against the Spartans today. Some of you seeing that game here on ABC. Mississippi State surprises Auburn with a shutout, 20 to nothing. And Damian Craig. 20 of 54 and four INTs. Yeah, plus two fumbles. Really, he has kind of fallen off here after a great start for Auburn. 27 touchdowns in the first six games, only two touchdowns in their last three games. So a lot of offensive problems for the Tigers. It looked for a while like we would see Florida and Auburn in a rematch in the SEC Championship, but as you can see now, wide open. Yeah, Auburn, Mississippi State, and LSU are tied. The, the picture is very muddled. Alabama, as bad as their year has gone, they still have an outside shot. Some other games here. Missouri facing Colorado. John Hessler has a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. Baylor beating Texas 23-21 in the fourth quarter, and Kansas is rolling over Iowa State. Louisiana Tech against Alabama. 22 yards to Josh Bradley for the touchdown reception, and Louisiana Tech had grabbed a 20-13 lead. This game's been delayed by lightning before the game, 32 minutes, and Alabama right now probably wishing they could get another delay. Louisiana Tech making their second of third trips into the state of Alabama. They lost to Auburn earlier. Next week, they come back to Alabama to play UAB. The Fighting Irish facing Navy this week. Chris McCoy, a little Hail Mary pass here to Pat McGrew. Pushed out of bounds, down by the one-yard line as the ball goes up. Terrific catch, bounces around, and hauled in. That's what you want in a Hail Mary. You want the ball to get tipped. You don't want the guy to catch it on the first catch. That's exactly the way you hope that play will go when you call it. Well, 21 to 17, as Navy didn't have enough to get past Notre Dame. They're now four and five. Southern Miss against Cincinnati. Dewan Gossin, a one-yard fumble return for a touchdown. That's 10-7 now at halftime. Out of the whack, Utah and Tulsa. And some other scores, Rice facing SMU, Colorado State, and UNLV. That's a one-point game. ABC's College Football is online live. Follow the action from today's games and follow the Heisman Trophy race. All on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. And we'll continue with more right after this. You can keep your car looking clean, but you've got to keep your engine clean, too. Newly formulated Valvoline DuraBlend motor oil is a synthetic blend that suspends the dirt, unburned fuel, and water that cause harmful deposits and reduces oil burn-off. DuraBlend protects vital engine parts, so your engine runs cleaner and better longer. It outperforms all leading conventional motor oils because a car can look great. But it's what's inside that counts. Valvoline DuraBlend. After 11 years, there are more Grand Amps still tearing along than any car in its class. So you can count on having a good time for a good long time. Grand Am, built for kicks, built for keeps. Now a good time is a great value with 4.9% financing for up to 60 months on any new Grand Am. But step on it, because even though a Grand Am lasts a long time, this offer won't. Grand Am, built for kicks, built for keeps. Drive it at your Pontiac dealer today. This is Valvoline Halftime 97, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. A great matchup next week in the Big Ten, Michigan against Penn State. But each team with a tune-up game today and don't get caught napping or might get bumped off. Now, Penn State facing Northwestern today. That's the backup fullback, Anthony Cleary, in for Aaron Harris, who's out for the season. 14 to nothing. Then Northwestern goes to a little trickery to get back in, and Tim Hughes fakes the punt, hits Mike Nelson a 42-yard game. One of the keys to calling a fake punt is called in a point in the game or in the field position where you really catch the defense by surprise. That was done by Gary Barnett, much to the dismay of Joe Paterno on the sideline. 
Now for Penn State, the quarterback, Mike McQuarrie, did not have a great day, but he scrambles here 11 yards, finds the end zone. Penn State up 21 to 7. Penn State wins it 30 to 27, but not very impressive as Northwestern gets a couple of late touchdowns. Well, Curtis Enos played very strongly again for Penn State, 153 yards. They've needed him in the fourth quarter the last couple weeks, and he has really come through for the Lions. Michigan's tune up against Minnesota, but don't forget the Golden Gophers almost knocked off Penn State. Charles Woodson on the offense this time out of his cornerback position. 33 yards, takes it in for a touchdown as Michigan gets their first touchdown of the day and wins it easily. 24 to 3 is the final. Michigan not allowed a second half touchdown this year. Well, the story for Michigan continues to be their defense. Sam Sword led the way today at linebacker, five tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And if you're going to play against Michigan, you better hope to get your work done in the first half because the second half, they really tighten down the screws. Only 10 yards in the second half today for Minnesota and no points in the fourth quarter all season. Or we mentioned Michigan against Penn State next week. A lot of people feel that Nebraska playing Oklahoma doesn't really mean that much this week. So the winner of that game next week should get to number one. Well, I don't think it'll happen for Michigan if they win because that's a big jump from four to one. Penn State, they're number two. Last week, I thought if they would beat Michigan, they should go back to number one. I'm not so sure now. I think they earn respect, but not the number one. They had a week off getting ready for the Northwestern game. And even though it was a late fourth quarter fumble by a backup tailback that kind of opened the way for a couple late touchdowns by Northwestern, they were not overly impressive today. Plus, Penn State may find themselves looking up in the polls, not only to Nebraska, but Florida State before this day's yeah, done. Florida State facing NC State today, so certainly there's a possibility they could be jumped again and go to number three. But here's what we have next Saturday, the big one. Michigan and Penn State, Nebraska against Missouri, Stanford, USC, Georgia Tech against Virginia. It is a judgment day here on ABC. All right, let's continue with the scores and the highlights. Purdue, what a story they've been this year. Six consecutive wins after losing to Toledo in the opener. Today facing Iowa. Billy Dickin tosses this one to Brian Alford. 78 yards he covers for the touchdown. Purdue had a 10 to nothing lead and things were looking golden again. But then Tavian Banks takes control. Well, Tavian Banks proving that Iowa still has a lot of weapons, a good football team that's had a couple rough weeks. Here you see him on the touchdown here. For the day, Tavian Banks, 24 carries, 126 yards in the touchdown that you just saw. Purdue had been playing pretty good defense during their winning streak, only giving up 17 points a game. Iowa got after him today. Still a tremendous season for Joe Tiller at 6-2 and two right now. Indiana beats Illinois 23 to 6. The Illini have now lost 14 straight games. Their last victory was Indiana last year. Tennessee in a bit of a struggle against South Carolina. 22 to 7, the final there. Peyton Manning did not have a great day. Yeah, one of his worst games in his career. 8 of 25, only 126 yards. Luckily for the Volunteers, they had a running back that could do some damage. Jamal Lewis, over 200 yards in the game today. That was the difference for the Volunteers. Kansas State, number 12 over Texas Tech, 13 to 2. Tech never did get off that two. Mike Bishop with a touchdown pass, but he was picked off three times. Virginia Tech blows out UAB, 37 to nothing. Marcus Parker had two touchdown runs. Miami of Ohio against Toledo. It was 28-27 Miami. When Chris Wallace goes to Brock Kreitzberg, 11 yards, they got the two-point conversion, and they pull it out again. Toledo unbeaten right now, and they've already clinched a berth in the MAC championship game. It's a great story in college football. Chris Wallace is their undisputed leader. Look at those numbers for the day. Four touchdowns, including the game winner with 24 seconds left. He is having a great season for the Rockets. Clemson blows out Wake Forest 33-16. Nelon Green picking up several records, including the Clemson record for total offense. 6,127 yards. Virginia shuts out Maryland, 45-0. Aaron Brooks, three touchdown passes and a couple of touchdown runs. Pittsburgh loses to Boston College, 22-21. Mike Cloud, 13 carries, 117 yards and two touchdowns. Marshall against Central Michigan. As Marshall gets the victory, 45-17 is the final. Randy Moss with another great day. Another strong day for Randy Moss. The only thing that's hurting him now is that Toledo is really the big-name team out of the Mid-American Conference. It's not Marshall, but a great day. 193 yards and a couple touchdowns. Yeah, just a couple of touchdowns. Just an average <laughs> day of work for Randy Moss. And Harvard shuts out Dartmouth 24 to nothing. It ends Dartmouth's 15-game unbeaten string in the Ivy League. Harvard first place right now in the Ivy. Stick around. There's still more to come on ABC's coverage of college football. Presenting the Valvoline Big Play Rebate and Sweepstakes. Save $4 on a case of Valvoline Motor Oil, and you could win one of six Mark Martin Signature Ford Thunderbirds. Here comes Mark now. He's up and right on the money. Valvoline, the number one choice of top mechanics. 
At BASF, we don't make the sunscreen. We make it stronger. We don't make the tennis shoes. We make them grip better. We don't make the jacket. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet. We make it tougher. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Considering the cost of today's exotic multi-metallic engine parts, shouldn't you use an antifreeze coolant with a patented new formula designed to protect your entire engine? Xerex Antifreeze, extreme protection for today's engines. Valvoline Halftime 97, brought to you by Valvoline. The number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. On the field, sometimes a player tries to mess with me, make me angry. If I let myself be drawn in, it could cost us the game. It's the same on the street, but the risk is greater. If someone tries to draw you into a fight, don't feed into it. Stay in control, talk it out, or walk away. You'll get respect and live to tell about it. So squash the anger. Squash it. Squash it. This message provided by the NCAA. For everyone who has a dream. I wish I could go to the ball. For everyone who knows there's someone special. I want to be in love when I get married. For everyone with a song in their heart. The ABC Magical Event of the Year. Cinderella for everyone. Sunday at 7, 6 central. Brian Boitano. Christy Yamaguchi. Katrina Gordieva. Paul Wiley. Rudy Galindo. Nancy Kerrigan. Don't miss skating's biggest names tonight. Your second half is straight ahead, but first a look at the leaderboard of the Tour Championship presented by Michelob and Mercedes-Benz. A four-way tie for the lead at eight under. Scott Hoke started the day nine under, got to ten under, and then fell apart on the backside. Tiger Woods was four over today. Bill Mickelson bogeyed the first three holes. It was a very tough day on the course, an average of one stroke more than the previous days. Now, tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 Pacific, final round coverage of the 97 Tour Championship presented by Michelob and Mercedes-Benz. And we'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Somewhere, some poor slob's punching a time clock. He don't know what he's missing. We gotta go, son. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Meet Dan Wolf, champion bull rider. This is what he does. This is what he drives. Pretty nice life. Chevy S10, like a rock. Try Chili's Ranch and Filet, a beautifully carved eight ounce tenderloin, slow grilled to perfection and placed on awesome blossom strings. Served with skillet potato cakes and grilled veggies, only at Chili's. Tuesday on ABC. It's the home improvement that'll have everybody talking when Wilson's niece moves in. On the Tool Man. If only every man was as evolved as you. <laughs> Yeah, it's important, isn't it? Yeah. Home Improvement, followed by Hiller and Diller. There's never been a better time to own a TV. Drew wins the Batmobile. Not only that, but look, I caught the Joker. But can he score in this supercar? Wait a second, let me check my utility belt for protection. <laughs> Wednesday. My sister discovered it. I can save 50% on all calls over 20 minutes just by dialing 10321. So I told my brother. Well, that's half off, so I told a friend. Just dial 10321, then one the area code and a number. Good news travels fast. Only by going alone in silence can one get into the heart of the wilderness. All other travel is mere dust and hotels and baggage and chatter. Destroyed our cities. But on November.
number sevens. They'll learn. They messed with the wrong species. Suka! Starship Troopers, rated R, opens everywhere Friday. This has got to be wrong. What? Our long distance bill. People who use 10 3 2, 1 are doing a double take on their long distance bill. Every call is less, and all the calls over 20 minutes are 50% less. And the race to London are great. Just dial 10 3, 2, 1. Look what's spinning along I-76. What's up with that? Sunday on 7 News at 10. It's the number one team in the nation, Nebraska, showing why. The Huskers, 34, Oklahoma, nothing. And Dan Fouts, it was really lopsided. Makovica rolling in for a touchdown, and it was downhill from there. Well, they got great field position that entire first quarter. They were going against the wind, but it looked like they were running downhill. Buck Walter gets in there. The beautiful pass when they get the wind behind them. And Newcomb is becoming a star all today. This was a great effort by Scott Frost to get in to the end zone. And there is number seven, the senior quarterback from Wood River, Nebraska. Scott Frost transferred back. Amon Green, the eye back, with Sims injured and out today. And D'Angelo Evans has been injured all season. Fielded at the four yard line by Walker. And Walker finds a gap to the 28 yard line and we take a look at the Dean Witter first half statistics turnovers were critical the Sooners put it on the carpet four times in that game and Nebraska stung them for 20 of their 34 points Dan and John Frost was four Scott Frost rather four for eight for the 77 yards but this average start is what absolutely killed Oklahoma in that first quarter green lined up behind Makovica. The toss is to Amon, searches daylight, and then picks his way to the 34 yard line, picking up six yards on the play. Joseph out of Miami making the stop. There's a look at the first half possessions chart as far as Nebraska was concerned after their fumble they got it right back immediately and marched for a quick field goal and then it was a touchdown field goal and a couple of scores before they were finally forced to punt second down the option pitch and Amon Green will roll easily for the first down steps out of bounds at the 43 yard line Corey L.I.B. was there for the Sooners Amon Green is basically healthy this year after suffering a turf toe injury then stress fracture last year. This is what the option looks like if you're playing weak safety for Oklahoma misdirection at first and then number 30 rolling around the corner for a first down. A delay, Green, the 46-yard line, picking up perhaps three yards on that carry. Let's talk a little bit, Dan, about the offensive line of the Corn Huskers. That's, of course, one of the reasons why this program continues to roll for Coach Osborne. Yeah, they have such a good combination of, of power and speed. Uh, and I think that's really the difference in, in this Husker offensive line is that they can get outside in front of Frost and in front of Green, but also they can just come right off the line and just blow uh, apart huge holes with the defensive lines. Newcomb is also in the backfield. Scott Frost fumble. I believe Nebraska. Re Let's see what happens here. It looked like he was trying to pitch the ball as he was going down. Ball carried by Scott Frost. It's another option play. Fake to Green up the middle. And now watch Frost here as he starts to stretch out. He sees he's got Brown on the outside and he tries to lateral it to him. Number 14 there. It looked like Corey L. Ivy hacked it out of his hands. Number 43 got around the other side. 
and knocked it free. Third down and two for the Huskers. Option, Frost, first down. He is a tough son of a gun. Now, we asked Scott if the offensive line is better this year than a year ago. Here's what he had to say. I think the offensive line is just a, a, a lot better unit as a whole. I think, uh, you know, the five guys that are playing probably aren't that much better than last year, but they're playing so well together right now. They know their stuff, and they're, they're used to playing with each other. And on top of that, I think we got the guys in the right positions, where I think last year we had a couple guys probably out of position. and It's just made a huge difference, and the, the holes we have to run through are huge. He's rolling to the outside, and he is ridden out by Brandon Moore, number 46, the linebacker, put a saddle on the Nebraska quarterback that time. I asked Scott about his body yesterday and how it's doing, and because he had 21 carries against Kansas last week. He says it's a little sore, but again, he is so determined to uh, win these people over and to, to move the offense and be the leader. And there's nothing that's going to get him out of the uh, out of the offense and then Tom Osborne says you know we're not going to change our style of play because of the big hits on the quarterback if uh, Frost can't go Frankie London's not a bad backup second and six and certainly before this is too far along we will be seeing Frankie London at quarterback coach Osborne will get a chance to look at, at a lot of reserves here in the second half Frost takes another licking at the 35 yard line Kelly Greg a defensive tackle who goes 285. So here's the offensive option breakdown. You can see how often he keeps it or pitches it, and then the changeup with Makavica at that fullback spot, and they have scored from every position of the option. Yeah, they, they hit with the fullback. That's kind of like the jab in the middle of the body shots, but their knockout punch is the pitch or the quarterback keeping on the outside. Davison came in motion. And there it is, complete. Inside the 15 yard line. Complete to number 80, Sheldon Blair Jackson. Sheldon Jackson, a junior tight end from Diamond Bar, California, rolling free that time. And it is first down, Huskers. Now all three wide receivers are to the bottom of the screen. It's a play action fake misdirection. And now at the end of the play, we'll come back to this. It's a great block by Bobby Newcomb. Lance Brown's the wing back. Come on, Green straight ahead inside the 10 yard line. Well, they're knocking everybody down. The umpire went down that time. Let's go back to the big pass play to Sheldon Jackson. There he is wide open after blocking. Watch the block from the left side of the screen. Boom, right there, Newcomb. He's doing it all today. That time he took out the middle linebacker, Corey L. Ivey. Huskers up 34-0 and stalking more. Second down and one at the Oklahoma nine-yard line. Lance Brown, number 14, is on the wing in this formation. Scott will pitch it to him this time, and he goes touchdown, number 14. So Lance Brown coming off that wing, steps in for six more. the extra point perfect it's 41 nothing Frost doing a great job and finally puts it in the wingbacks hands and Brown with a nifty job to score To get the most out of your digital satellite system, you need DirecTV. And for expert advice and guaranteed low prices on your new system, you need Circuit City. 
We're your DSS experts, and we'll show you how to see more sports, movies, and pay-per-view than on any other system. Right now, get $100 off professional installation or get a self-install kit free with any DSS purchase. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. loves his job and the third door in his Chevy S10. It's one of a kind, just like Duke. Chevy S10, like a rock. Strength, knowledge, and experience. That's the Pacific Life family of companies. Managing more than $150 billion in assets, providing insurance and investment products for 130 years, helping thousands of businesses and millions of individuals reach their financial goals. Use the power of the Pacific. Pacific Life. This Tuesday... You beat that girl! You will feel everything they feel. It's the season's most emotional blue. All new ABC Tuesday. Bobby. Bobby. Lance Brown, responsible for the last Nebraska touchdown. Now Chris Brown, out of South Lake, Texas. Into the win. He wants Jackson again on that side at the 20-yard line. Cut off, forced back to the middle. And down at the 28-yard line. And it will be number three, Eric Moore, who will quarterback the Sooners here. You get an idea of how many snaps. Fuente with the quick hook. Daniels was in for 20 snaps. And note that each of them turned it over on a fumble. The fourth fumble was on a kickoff return. I don't get it either, Brent. Settle on one quarterback and let him play. By pulling a quarterback out every five or six plays, you totally destroy whatever little bit of confidence he may have. Here's the left-hander. Down at the 26-yard line. Enormous pressure by the defensive front. Grant Wistrom playing a bang-up game. He is certainly a candidate for the Chevrolet player of this game if we look on this defensive side of the ball. Charlie McBride, McBride defensive coordinator of the Cornhuskers, says they had to change their type of uh, defense uh, for each of these different types of quarterbacks. He said that they're going to blitz a lot more against Fuente, but they don't really have to blitz. That defensive line, the front four, is doing the job. Second and 12. Nothing doing for the freshman running back because 98 is there again. And Missouri up by 10 with 3.52 to go in the fourth. The importance there, of course, is the fact that Nebraska goes to Missouri next week. What a scene that would be if Mizzou pulls off that upset of Colorado today over in Boulder. And, you know, I think uh, Grant Wister heard Tom Osborne say that Jason Peter was the best defensive lineman ever at Nebraska. <laughs> you know, they're best friends. Third and 14 on the release, incomplete. Sooners forced to punt. Unless there's a flag, let's see what the situation is. Nope, here comes the punting team. Grant Wistrom just refuses to get blocked today. The young Wiz, Nukem, from behind Shackleford, under enormous pressure late in the first half a couple of times. Seven-yard line, and this is Brandon Harrison. Out of bounds at the Sooners' 45, an 18-yard return off a 39-yard punt. Timeout. The aluminum in your car radiator is as thin as this sheet, and it's the only thing between you and a breakdown. But Presto Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming a zone of protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Protect your car in the Preston Zone. 
Thanks for the truck, Dad. What'd you do? Not much. Where'd you go? Kurtz? You still talking about moving that old barn? Nope. The best long-term quality of any full-size pickup belongs to Chevy. Had a scratch? <sighs> nope. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The aluminum in your car radiator is as thin as this sheet, and it's the only thing between you and a breakdown. But Preston Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming a zone of protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Protect your car in the Preston Zone. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And MetLife, get met, it pays. Jack Aroot, Dan Fouts, I'm Brad Musburger. It is all Nebraska, the nation's number one team. Putting on a clinic here to the tune of 41 to nothing over Oklahoma with 9.15 to go in the third quarter. Scott Frost. And I'm on green. And I'm on green with just a couple of white jerseys away from going all the way. How about this uh, offensive line of the Huskers, Jack? A root? Brent Aaron Taylor, believe it or not, when he first started playing football, literally did not, how to, did not know how to put the uniform on. They gave him a set of hip pads, Brent, and you know they're supposed to go in the hips, right? He tried to put him down in the knees. They gave him a set of thigh pads. He wasn't quite sure where they went. He tried to put him in the back. So finally, he says, you know what I had to do? In junior high school, I used to sit in the locker room and watch the other guys get dressed. That told me what to put on where. He puts it on very well now, doesn't he? Second down and one. Makovica! Makovica! Touchdown, Nebraska! John Blake Sooners had to crowd the line of scrimmage if they had any hope at all of creating some type of turnover. A rare smile by Tom Osborne as he sees his walk-on fullback go 37 yards right up the middle. And Chris Brown again. Gonna have a tired leg by the time this baby's over. Forty-eight, nothing. Eight twenty-three left in the third. Makovic has scored seven times this year from the fullback position. This may be his most impressive. Makes a move there on Ivy, and this just outruns everybody to the end zone. No sooner in the picture. into the game averaging 7.3 yards per carry doing a nice job up in that today since 92 you can see the number of points per game in this rivalry it is hard to believe but coach Tom Osborne is 12 and 13 lifetime against this team Jackson to the 35 yard line and yet the last couple of years certainly two of the most dominant games ever in the history of this rivalry 
I got a kick out of uh, talking with him yesterday, Brent, when he said that well, he just started here as a head coach, uh, as the caretaker of Bob Devaney's uh, great program. Now, after 25 years as the head man here, I'd say he's no longer the caretaker. He's a legend in his own right. So Brandon Daniels now becomes the second quarterback this half. Hands off to Latrell, who busts one for 12 yards on that carry. And of course, this is the second consecutive week that Oklahoma has used three quarterbacks. And Osborne said, he said, I don't know how they do it. We had one guy go into a game in the second quarter for five or six plays. We started a whole lot of controversies. I can't imagine what playing three guys, 25 snaps apiece would do to your team. And here is Oklahoma. They used all three in the first half. Now it's the second quarterback to be used here in the second half. Great defense. Daniels will test it. Handing it again to Latrell for a couple of oh, yards that time. So Missouri heads into its showdown with Nebraska at Columbia next Saturday with a 10-point upset of Colorado in Boulder. 41 to 31 the final. You cannot say enough about Larry Smith and the job he has done. That coaching staff is a candidate for the coaching staff of the year job. That is remarkable. We watched them against Ohio State. That was a very mediocre football team on that day. But they have started to come along now, getting better and better. We'll find out next week how good. Daniels steps away from the rush, going down. Mike Rucker along with Wistrom that time. And the numbers just keep piling up for Nebraska on defense. Five sacks on the afternoon. And the quarterback uh, has absolutely no chance at all. This time Daniels goes down under Rucker's pressure. Jason Wiltz, number 99, also there defensively in some very long faces. On the Sooner sideline, they trail it by 48, 6, 28. Daniels, nothing doing. All over that play, incomplete is the rule. So the Huskers, dominant, of course, in the Northern Division. There's the scores from around the league. Kansas State a winner. Missouri with its upset. Baylor beats Texas by two. Kansas, a 10-point winner over Iowa State, and a big one tonight down in College Station, Texas A&M, hosting Oklahoma State. The Cowboys are coming off that loss a week ago, and that South very much up in the air. Shackelford punting it, and Newcomb is the middleman back deep. Nebraska always protects its wings, or I shouldn't say always, most of the time. Coming through blocked. Warfield may have gotten to that one. It's going to be downed at the 29-yard line. Number three was flying off the corner. Reminded me of Terrell Farley. You know, he did such a good job that the ball actually will go under him. He got his right hand on the ball, and the ball still went 33 yards. Shackleford never saw him. <laughs> I think that was a message for Neuheisel. I'm not sure. But first down at 10. Frost pitch among Green to the alley. 40 sideline near midfield and finally out of bounds. We had an opportunity to ask Amon Green what his favorite play is, and here's what he had to say. Um, I say one of I say one of our inside trap plays, 42 counter trap or 42 power, which is about the same, where I'm hitting the host at the same rate. I like it because it's it got the chance to go all the way. I mean, if you hit it just right, there's nobody. You probably won't even get touched on the play. And you know, my lineman, the guards is trapping the defensive tackle, and my fullback's taking on the play, so I rush in. And if everything is clicking, that could play that play could go all the way. Frost tries to get clicking on the pass play to Newcomb. Oh, wow, what a catch by the freshman. Oh, how did he do that? You know, Brent, he was out of bounds. It came back in bounds. 
And I don't think the official saw it. And I maybe he was uh, forced, he forced out of out? bounds, but what? Right side of the screen. Looks like Frost is throwing this ball away, but apparently. 13 forced him yeah, out, I believe. Terry, that was White Terry White forced him out, and then watch this catch with the left hand. Where did this guy come from? Well, he was born in Africa. The family moved to the United States. Played high school ball in Albuquerque as Macca twists and powers his way down toward the 31 yard line. Stopped on the play by number 92, Corey Kalos. Uh, as long as the defensive back pushes you out of bounds, you can come back onto the playing field and make a play on the ball. And that's exactly what happened. But the play on the ball was so impressive. Second down and four. And back they come and Makovic goes for another touchdown. That's not an instant replay. That's brand new. You know that favorite play that Amon Green said he liked so much? This one is just like it. It's a trap play right up the middle, and if it's blocked correctly, this is the result. Two times in a row now, Makovic has gone right up the middle, untouched. This one, 32 yards. He's got three go, touchdowns go. on the day. Chris Brown almost exhausted. Adds another one. 5.09 to go in the third. The Cornhuskers, 55. Oklahoma nothing. Hard to believe. Chevy Blazer with the driver control system. A little security in an insecure world. And over easy. Uh, take these back. They're over hard. Try again. I think I liked you better smoking. He's quitting cold turkey. Hey, I'm quitting myself. Can I suggest? Nicoderm CQ. Does that help? If it didn't, you'd be wearing these eggs. With a 24-hour stream of medicine, Nicoderm CQ calms even nasty cravings. It's the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to quit successfully. You know what? I like you better not smoking. Vacation travelers know that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. go. National Car Rental. Especially if you're planning to go to the Let's Walt go. Disney World 25th Anniversary Celebration. Because Let's as go. the official car rental company of Walt Disney World, National Let's gets go. you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you Let's waiting go. for? Let's go to the Walt Disney World 25th Anniversary with National Car Rental. But hurry, the Let's celebration go. ends January 31st. Usually a, a pretty good indication when they roll for over 300 yards. A year ago, they only had 208 yards down in Norman. And you can see the record when they reach that number. On the ground, picked up on the 15-yard line by Lewis. And the refreshed return man. His first kickoff return of the game as they ignored Jackson that time. They got bored kicking into Jackson, so they'll try Lewis out to the 39. A year ago, down in Norman, it was 73 to 21, Nebraska. And here today, it is 55 to nothing inside of five minutes. And now, Eric Moore returns. So that means that Justin Fuente is deep in the doghouse, Dave. Uh, you think they might uh, want to throw the ball with the wind at their back. Fuente did not throw the ball well in the first quarter, but he's never had a shot to try it again since then. Here is their most impressive running back in the day, Latrell, and again, Demond Parker, one of the finest running backs in the country, missing this game because of an injury. So 
The Sooners did come into this one shorthanded. But it would have taken several supermen to overcome a 55 point explosion on the part of the Huskers here today. Make no mistake, this right now is the number one team in the nation. Still a lot of football to be played, but you wouldn't want to question it today. Latrell out to the left, and forced penalty flag will come late on the play. This is a pretty tough looking sky and I see a lot of folks heading for shelter right now. Face mask penalty goes against and you can see why raindrops on that camera lens right now and it's starting to howl inside of Memorial Stadium. A little thunder and lightning too. Five yard penalty. Gives it first down. Uh, Jack Aroot, I know one family tough enough to stick it out, the McAvickas. Well, this is Jeff McAvicka, and he's a two-time national champion. And you said before we were on the air, this is what kind of weather? This is football weather right now. This is what you like to play in. This is what uh, especially uh, a hard-running football team wants to play in, and, and they got an ideal situation. I think they're going to run with it. How about the performance of your brother today? I'm just so excited with what he's done all year in the team, and today he's actually doing really good, and uh, that last touchdown was great. All right, Jack, try to stay dry down there, partner. Chad Kelsey out of Auburn, Nebraska. He's a junior backup defensive end. A lot of reserves now starting to file onto the field, and a lot of red ponchos are breaking out here. The stands of Memorial Stadium as the shower begins to come down. Beautiful rainbow over Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln. It's all part of the celebration for Tom Osborne's 250th win, huh? Latrell pounded at the 46-yard line. And a reminder, next week we'll have Nebraska at Missouri. Also, Michigan at Penn State. Stanford to play USC, Georgia Tech, Virginia. Then on Saturday night on ESPN, North Carolina will host Florida State at ESPN tonight. You've got West Virginia and Syracuse in the, in the Big East. I was thinking one week ahead of myself already. Third down and eight. And more. Hands to Latrell, who is ambushed from the back and pulled down by Eric Johnson, the junior linebacker, number one. Eric Johnson fits into that athlete category that uh, Charlie McBride, defensive coordinator, likes to talk about. Guys that uh, are good, hard hitters, regardless of their size, they run well, and uh, basically, they're very good athletes. It doesn't matter how big they are, just as long as they'll hit and make tackles all over the field. And that's what Johnson and McFarland and a number of these guys do so well. Fourth and four, with the wind at their back and trailing by 55, why not? And more. Fires got an open man, got it. To the two yard line goes Steven Alexander, first and goal. They're fine. Tight end making the big play on fourth down, 40 yards. There's their most impressive offensive play of the game. Here he is, number 80. Just running right down the middle of the defense, gets behind Eric Warfield, and that's a great pass by Eric Moore. And the Nebraska's string of shutouts is in real danger of being snapped now. Great pass protection for Moore and a perfect throw. And you know what, Brent, that, this will be the deepest penetration by a Nebraska opponent in three weeks. Thank First you. and goal. Moore up under center. The fullback Latrell touchdown OU. The string is over. Seth Luttrell, freshman fullback who has run hard all day, been the most impressive of the skill players for OU, bangs hard into the end zone. This true freshman has now gained 87 yards on 19 carries, and they've all been tough ones right up the middle. Jeremy Alexander set for the extra point. Two minutes remaining here. Quarter number three. This is a great lift for those youngsters from Norman. 
Bangs the extra point, makes it 55-7. So Tom Osborne's reserves on the field. They give it up, and Oklahoma will gladly take it, and we ship you to New York at John Saunders. John? Time for the Burger King play of the day. Thad Busby of Florida State hooking up with E.G. Green. This one would cover 80 yards when all was said and done for Green. His 25th career touchdown catch, tying Barry Smith, who did it back in the 70s. And Florida State is rolling over NC State in this one. But that play covering 80 yards. That's your Burger King play of the day. Florida State leads by 20. And here it's 55-7 Nebraska, Oklahoma. Snaps the Huskers defensive string of scoreless quarters. Ten after back-to-back -back shutouts. Well, Tom Osborne, he'll record victory number 250 here today in his 25th year. Number 25, Joe Walker. And number 12, And had a brief career with the San Francisco 49ers. They'll take, going to bring it out. This is Walker. Not the best of decisions on Joe Walker's part. And uh, Walker mentioned, of course, that Osborne played briefly as a wide receiver with the San Francisco 49ers. So let's take a look at the Home Depot coaches fact. His roommate was Jack Kemp. And he said, I knew that he was a serious young man and a conservative back in those days. Osborne did of Kemp because all he did was sit around and read books in the room. Frankie London in at quarterback. We thought we'd see him today, and here he is. Here's the toss to Lyme Green and Green to the 16-yard line. And the reason Tom Osborne was a roommate of Jack Kemp is because originally Tom Osborne was a quarterback. But not only did the 49ers have Jack Kemp uh, on the squad trying to make the team, they had a guy named Y.A. Tittle and a young quarterback by the name of John Brody. So Tom Osborne saw the handwriting on the wall and says, hey, let me play in. And, and then the Niners, Dan, traded Tittle to the Giants. Is that right? In 61, uh, they traded him to uh, the New York Giants for Lou Cordelion. And all 49er fans to this day think that's one of the all-time great trades for the New York Giants. Well, as Scott Frost will take the rest of the game off, what's your assessment of the performance we saw by number seven here for Nebraska? I, I think it's his le leadership that is so impressive. He really only made one bad decision on the entire day. And in talking to their offensive coordinator, Frank Solich, he says that's been a big part of his improvement. Is They come up the line of scrimmage a lot, and they have a lot of check with me plays. A lot of times he has to make the change of the play at the line of scrimmage. And he is just playing with so much confidence now that uh, this team is much more dangerous than it has been in a long time. London keeps it. Steps for a Nebraska first down. Frankie London out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. He's a sophomore, six foot, 180 pounds. And we still have a half minute to go here in the third quarter. And when London appeared early in the year, there were some boos when Frost trotted back onto the field. But as Dan has pointed out several times in the first half, there were no boos after Frost and the Huskers returned from Seattle, having beaten the favored Washington Huskies. Buckhalter is still the eye back. London's going to throw to him on a swing. A little bit too far in front of him. Seven seconds remain here in the quarter. Second and ten. London eyes the defensive set of the Sooners. This figures to be the last snap of the third quarter. And here is the pitch now to Buckholder. First down, Nebraska as the quarter comes to an end. Number 
So Joel Makovica, three touchdowns on the day. And a couple of them looked very similar. We'll have more after this message and a word from our ABC stations. New family members mean new responsibilities and new needs for life insurance protection. Why not drop in on your MetLife representative who will help make sense of it all for you Mama. and your family. Get Met. It pays. Isn't that a pretty sight? So how many miles? 50? 90. 90? 90,000 90, miles. Jeez, that's just getting broke in for Chevy. Is that a scratch? Scratches give character. The best long-term quality of any full-size pickup belongs to Chevy. Women like character. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Oh, What'd you step in? In November, the yards get tougher, and every game becomes a must-win. Steelers Chiefs on ABC's Monday Night Football. Bring on the game now! Even though Dodge Ram is the bright red gold standard of pickup trucks, we're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8s even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the Ram lineup since introduction, including this one, our new flow-through ventilation system. New Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. So, Chuck, my daughter tells me you're a, a genius. It's true. I was dialing 10321 before anyone. Ah. But did you know it saves over AT&T on every call in the U.S.? And 50% off all calls over 20 minutes. International rates are great, too. No need to sign up. Simply dial 10321. Then the number is usual. I like him. Just get a haircut. Dad. <laughs> A jogger is killed in traffic. The story on 7 News at 5. This is college football on ABC Sports. Well, here the number one team rolling, 55-7. Florida still under fire from Georgia. That one's 21-17. Bulldogs still with a lead in Jacksonville. The rain coming down on Tom Osborne's day of celebration. 25 years. This will be victory number 250. And it comes at the hands of the old rival, Oklahoma, a team you will not see again until the next century. Under the rotation schedule, the Big 12, they will not play next year, for the next couple of years. And this is Carl Buckhalter. Give you an idea, the North. Nebraska well on its way to another Big 12 championship game this year to be played in San Antonio rather than St. Louis. The Huskers at 4-0 will play now 4-2 Missouri in Columbia next Saturday. Dan and I will be there looking forward to that one seeing Corby Jones again. The South very wide open unless Oklahoma State can beat Texas A&M tonight. That would put the Cowboys at 4-1 and, and in control of that division. So a huge one tonight. Quarterback draw by London to the 44, short of the first down, and Brown makes the stop. Boy, and Brent, you mentioned the words Big 12 championship game, and you get a reaction out of this Cornhusker football team. You talk about a bad taste in their mouth. They've used it as motivation this entire season, and uh, they really want to make atonement for that. Fourth and one. Never forget it. James Brown to Derek Lewis. Longhorn fans won't forget it either. That's probably the last thing they've had to really cheer about. Can't believe that the Horns got hooked today by Baylor. Third down of one. London keeps it first down. Breaks to inside Oklahoma territory and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Nifty looking little runner. Travian Smith finally got him out. By number 36, Travian Smith. He gives you a little bit different type of option quarterback than Frost. Frost will try to run over defensive backs and linebackers, as we've seen today. London tries to make a miss. Big
quick snaps for some backup offensive linemen because Nebraska will have to rebuild basically the entire offensive line next year. Hoskinson is now in at center. And here is the freshman high back powering right straight ahead off of his block. Coral Buckhalter, he's out of Collins, Mississippi. And with the injury to Sims, he's now the number two man to Amon Green. And remember at 8 Eastern, Mike Tyson and Michael Jordan go 101 on primetime live. A couple big interviews there. And then it's the Steelers and the Chiefs in Kansas City. Dan, what's your feeling about the Monday Nighter on ABC? I'm a little bit worried about Jerome Bettis. I understand he's hurting a little bit going into that one. Not an easy place to win, Arrowhead Stadium, especially without your bus. Second down and two, and London looking for the screen. Got it set with Buckholzer. Beautiful block, 25 20. And he is down to the nine yard line. A penalty flag. A couple of them. There's probably a face mask at the end of that play, which would be half the distance, and put it down around that four yard line when they get finished marking things off here. So many interchangeable parts for Nebraska. Buckhalter comes in the game and looks every bit as effective as Amon Green. Probably only fitting for Oklahoma that the Undertaker is the referee here today, and that's uh, Al Dowden. Well, they call the face mask against Nebraska, but isn't this a face mask against Oklahoma? Penalties will offset. And uh, sometimes even the Undertaker makes a mistake. And what a costly one it might be. To <laughs> <laughs> get on his case, he can always go over and say, I'll see you down the road, partner. <laughs> it's not my idea of a good time is to be buried in Oklahoma. I did play. Against they the did Sooners you, huh? in 72. And, and they did bury, yeah? Oh, did they ever. <laughs> uh, 68 to 3. And our three points that day came on about a 59-yard field goal. <laughs> oh, I was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> second down and two. Do it again. Do it again. Short of it. Short of it. It's absolutely amazing what Nebraska continues to do year after year when you think about Oklahoma and the problems that they've had over the last few seasons and some other big programs around the country. And, uh, well, it, it all comes back to Osborne being here for 25 years. Stability. His coaching staff has got a tremendous amount of experience. They don't have to learn things every year. The players know exactly what they get when they come here to Nebraska. Here's third and two. Let's see what London comes up with. Straight power handoff and the freshman in there for the first down. Strong run. Well, you can see the three teams, and remember, Florida is under fire this afternoon again by Georgia. Nebraska and Florida State figure to move to eight. No, but look at Notre Dame, Miami, Texas, Oklahoma will fall under 500 this year. Some big names falling by the wayside this season, but uh, Tom Osborne and the Huskers continuing to roll. If he can win it all this year, it would be three national titles in four years, but he'll have to go back through South Florida. And if it winds up being Florida State down there, remember the Knowles will have a huge home field advantage. Be a lot of fans down there. And a couple of great defenses testing some very versatile offenses. Still a lot of football to be played. North Carolina says we'll have something to say about that next Saturday night in Chapel Hill. Wistrom and his friend Peter. Strong game. Here today, London steps out. Here's the pitch to Buckhalter. And a penalty flag comes flying. And Buckhalter to the 30 yard line, but again, there's yellow. 10.44 to go, 55 7, Nebraska. 
Can you remember any other holding calls against Nebraska today? No, there were none against their first team. Uh, that offensive line was just outstanding. We're seeing uh, what happens when you put in some of your reserves. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. And remember, they've had only two holding calls all season. And so that first unit offense didn't get one today. A remarkable string by that line. Alec, Taylor and Heskew, Zaneska, Anderson. Great job, and they're all out of the game right now. London bringing around, going to throw. Got an open man. a man who won the 100 meters, the 200 meters, and the 400 meters, and the long jump as a senior in high school in Albuquerque. No wonder he's all alone. And he's going to limp off the field. Let's hope that he's not injured after he gets shoved out of bounds here. This was a great throw by Frankie London. But I'd be looking for number 12. I mean, how many ways can Nebraska hurt you? Now, Newcomb is becoming a force. Three catches, Dan, for 88 yards, one touchdown. Seems to be all right on the sideline. Touchdown, Buckholder. That's his second. Oh, baby. 72 points last year and already 61 with an extra point to come this year. for Osborne to look across the field and not see Barry Switzer over there. That was his old nemesis. And Ted Retzlaff gets a shot. Chris Brown's leg obviously tired. <laughs> so the senior from Waverly gets to put this extra point up. It's 62-7. Competition can't explain how a car that broke all the molds still has enough power to keep blowing away the stereotypes. Ford Taurus SE Sport, now with a 200 horsepower Duratec V6. Have you driven a Ford lately? Oh, hi, honey. Am I excited about Thursday? Of course, mm -hmm. Thursday's our anniversary. Of course, I planned a trip. Yeah, we're taking the uh, Orient Express to uh, spot in Thailand for. Uh, Bird watching. Love you too. Bye. Hmm. New Visa Platinum. To go to Thailand. With a world of purchase power for the unexpected, including that trip you never thought you'd take. This was such a surprise. Yeah. New Visa Platinum. It's everywhere you want to be. A company most people never heard of is changing the way we fight cancer and kidney failure by inducing the body to produce blood cells. Chemotherapy and anemia patients are gaining new strength. Helping to grow blood cells helped Amgen become the world's largest biotech company. Where do you learn about companies with such pioneering spirit? Exactly. Nasdaq.com. Monday, two knockout interviews. Mike Tyson's first interview since the bite fight. And slam dunk superstar Michael Jordan. A special sports primetime live Monday. Brand Louisiana Tech against Alabama and Tim Rattay, Tech's quarterback, back to pass, looks for Troy Edwards, has him on the short pass. Edwards does most of the work, 49 yards to make it 26-13 Louisiana Tech, and Alabama has lost this one at home. Brent. Oh, my. I don't know if they're upset more in Norman, Oklahoma, or down in Alabama with that one. Holy Toledo. Out of the end zone and coming up on the 20. How the times have changed, huh, Dan? 
Oh, we put up that graphic about uh, some very prominent football programs struggling. Let's add Alabama to the list. What's up, people back They were there game? already struggling this year. And uh, who's the quarterback? Eric Moore. I don't know. Pick one. That seems to be the way uh, John Blake's deciding. First down out to the 22 yard line. That's Buster Kuhn, freshman tailback, number 38. Getting his first carry. Inside of 10 minutes. And again, he received a vote of confidence this week from the president of the university down in Oklahoma. to the 26 yard line that's Latrell still hanging tough for him and a reminder tomorrow we have the final round of the tour championship that's two eastern time Duval Love Faxon and Glasson all tied for the lead at eight under par so that's tomorrow at ABC 919 to go here for the game at 62 7. The Huskers Showing why they are number one. They're going to stay that way this way. Fumble! Whistle! They dash into the end zone, but the whistle had blown. You know, that's two plays this guy has made today, Kyle Vandenbosch, that have been called back. Remember, he blocked the punt in the uh, first half, and uh, the uh, Sooners were offside, so that didn't count. And this one, they're going to say that. Seth Luttrell was down before the fumble occurred. Look at all the Nebraska Cornhuskers trying to rip that ball loose. Carlos Polk was number 13 there. And poor Vanden Bosch has another big play that doesn't count. He's a freshman out of Larchwood, Iowa. Third string defensive rushman. Faces of the Warriors here today. It's 62 7. We'll be right back. They were really growing up fast. Too fast. All Kelly talked about was going to high school, and all I could think about was paying for college. Sure, I played around with a few mutual funds, but I was no expert. So I started talking to someone who could help a broker at Dean Witter. We must plan for our client's future as if it were our own. Funny. Kids think their parents always have the right answers. I'm just making sure I do. We measure success one investor at a time. to see why Escort is so popular. It's a value so enticing, it's like getting cake with extra icing. You can get power, lots of power, power galore, to whisk down the windows and unlock the doors, adjust the side mirrors, but wait, there is more. Opt for a remote, AC, a smooth automatic, and a CD player for the music fanatic. And if that's not enough, you can get an anti-theft system to protect this good stuff. The buck starts here for Escort Thrills, somewhat higher, loaded to the gills. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven that Ford lately? National car rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. And by Nike. The 
breeze is whipping across the plains, the ever-changing sky, but some things never change in Lincoln, like the Cornhuskers. Number one is going to stay there with an awesome performance today. And Nakavica pounding straight ahead for the Huskers. He scored three touchdowns. And there is that brilliant Midwestern sky, Dan Fouch. Well, the thing I like about it is that's the direction I'm headed after this ball game's over. West, right <laughs> into the sunset. <laughs> Makaveka, over 100, three touchdowns. Well-deserved round of applause. Averages better than 10 yards a carry today. A dream game for Joel Makaveka. Alexander. Or he makes the charts with a carry today. Seven minutes and counting. That clock cannot move fast enough for the Oklahoma Sooners. And certainly we will have time for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Saunders and Todd Blackley's will take it just as soon as this one comes to an end. They'll bring you to the top of the hour and fill you in with scores and highlights. Right back to the well again. Alexander's got a little size on him, too, doesn't he? Yeah, he goes about 250. And uh, really, got some guns, too. You know the great thing about these uh, Nebraska players is that, that weight room was so impressive. We were in there yesterday, and the equipment that they have and the technology. But I love the stand, the podium, where the, you, you've got to be a qualifier in lifting uh, so many pounds. I don't really know a whole lot about weight rooms, Brent, other than that's where you're supposed to weight a lot. But uh, these guys are really something, the way they get ready. On fourth down, they go right straight ahead. Willie Miller. Another big guy. He goes 235. Jack Aroot. Well, guys, you know, you're talking about that weight room. That was the brainchild of Boyd Epley, who was originally here as a strength and conditioning coach. Now, get this. He is the director of conditioning, and it's a multi-surface thing. Boyd, I talked to him before the game. He says, we employ nutritionists, what they call rehabilitative nutritionists, and also, they take the strength and conditioning and tailor it to the position that they run. But listen to what they added this year, guys. A sports psychologist. This is a major factory in Lincoln, Nebraska. All right, uh, Jack, did you get any free visits with that fella down in the uh, locker room yesterday? And I'm not talking about the strength coach. <laughs> no comment. Jack went silent on us for the first time, Dan. <laughs> I thought maybe he was on the couch for something for a while. Second half <laughs> at seven. He told me not to answer questions like that. <laughs> Willie Miller. Get your saddlebags ready, partner. You got five minutes to say whatever you want down there. <laughs> You've used. <laughs> I, I've got a friend who's running audio down there. He just starts to say something nasty, and we turn him off, right, Dan? <laughs> yeah, that's sports psychologist. That works every time, huh, Jack? <laughs> Third down and two. This is uh, Monte Cristo. He is the quarterback. Alexander, the running back. Another first down. Osborne is trying to call the dogs off, and uh, they just keep moving down toward the end zone. But there's my favorite name of the day, Monte Cristo, out of Kearney, Nebraska, junior quarterback, six foot, 200 pounds. Hey, you know, Brent, uh, these running backs, they get the ball, and this offensive line is trying to uh, open holes. Uh, what are they going to do? They're just not supposed to fall down. Keep running until you get tackled. <laughs> to the nine-yard line. Keep running until you get to the end zone, baby. That's huh? right. <laughs> Third string trying to take it into the house now with the rain coming down. You got to really wonder about parents with the last name of Cristo that go out and name <laughs> their, their son, son. Monty. <laughs> 
Well, parents with a sense of humor, that's what I like. Must have been on the menu. Let's <laughs> it down. That was Josh Cobb. Something else on the menu. Well, we want to also uh, <laughs> thank our spotter, Brian Mobelson, working overtime today, <laughs> looking three and four deep into the small print on the Nebraska roster. <laughs> and you know, with that rush, the Cornhuskers meet their season average, actually surpass it, 400 yards rushing on the afternoon. 310. And Miller says, I'm going to the house. Put it up. Ball carry for number 15. Really moving. Miller scoring for the Huskies. Would not be denied. Well, when it's your first college touchdown, as it is for Willie Miller, it just adds to the numbers. So Nebraska bids a bond adieu to Oklahoma for a couple of years off their schedule. They're going to go three deep with kickers, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dan Hayfeld. They've had three guys kick extra points in this game. 69 to 7. Timeout. It says here you're uh, lazy, highly unmotivated. You have a problem with authority. Yeah, I've got two references to prove that. Well, the only thing I can say is, you the man! You the man! For the great man. taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Technically, I can't give you a raise yet. You're right, policy, schmalsy. <laughs> hey, Max. Why just sit around when you could have fun in the new Ford ZX2? New Ford ZX2. Grab life by the wheel. Max? Try Chili's Ranch and Filet, a beautifully carved eight ounce tenderloin, slow grilled to perfection and placed on awesome blossom strings. Served with skillet potato cakes and grilled veggies, only at Chili's. Sixty-nine to seven, Nebraska. Three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, and Brett's laugh will kick it off. Three-yard line is Chris Lewis. Lewis down at the 19-yard line. Well, I certainly have an opportunity to thank all the folks who've been bringing you college football all fall. The coordinating producer is Tony Tortorisi, the executive producer here at ABC, Steve Anderson. Today's telecast was produced by Jim Ressler, directed by Drew Esikoff, our TD today, Jeff Suarez, our associate producer, Patrick McManus, the production manager, Beth Giuliani Gatto and our technical operations manager, Jay Gleason. So let me thank everybody, cameramen and everybody who brought you this game today. Eric Moore he is in. Brent, all those people you mentioned are all first stringers, too. We're not uh, going to the bench at all today. Well, our assistants to the producer, Elizabeth Reel and Brian Lockhart. They'll get us out of here as soon as this one ends. Those cars will be down there, warmed up, cold Budweiser, the whole thing. Our stats man, Roger Riley, nice job. Anthony Holman, computer stats. Sideline coordinator, Babu Blakes, stands down there in the rain. Make sure we get all the bills paid. <laughs> 247 to go. 
course, right now, we can imagine that Mo Anke, he's a favorite of our director, Drew Essikoff. He can't wait for that meeting to see how he's going to shut down this Nebraska. You know, the good news is for Missouri, you upset Colorado. The bad news is Nebraska's coming to play you next. That is some tough assignment for Mo Anke this week. Well, that, that they upset Oklahoma State the week before, and it's good to see that Mo has recovered from being knocked out in the wild celebration there at Stillwater. Uh, one of the players uh, on the Missouri team was swinging his helmet wildly and knocked Mo out cold <laughs> during the celebration. It's dangerous. Second down and Moore keeps it. Now late catch. Short of the first down. Buster Kuhn, number 38, the ball carrier for the Sooners. <laughs> A long, long way to go for Oklahoma. And on the other side, victory number 250. He has run one of the great programs in college football. And is such a treat to come in here. These are some of the greatest fans that I've ever been around in the history of sport. Any game. Keep on licking you down there. They just keep bringing out fresh bodies. Keep coming out, hitting the quarterback. Moore's wondering when the other guy gets to go back in. Final minute. Our friends John Saunders and Todd Blackledge getting ready for the thrifty car rental post game show. 35 seconds. Shackelford. Nebraska has only got 10 men on the field. at the 46 yard line it was good enough and well, the final 14 seconds they'll run it out so a reminder the unbeatens Florida State still going Washington State and folks Washington State could lose tonight they got a toughy and Tempe against an improving Arizona State team Toledo puts up another number. North Carolina on Thursday night, a field goal better than Georgia Tech. Michigan, a winner today. And of course, here, the number one team in the country until someone can prove otherwise right on the field. This team deserves to be number one. This is an awesome group in here under Tom Osborne. There it is. 25 years, 250 victories. He lost his first five games ever against Oklahoma. Finally, he broke through in the sixth one. And what would happen? They would invite both teams to the Orange Bowl, and Barry Switzer would beat him that year in the rematch. And after struggling, he finally comes out after whipping away in Norman today at 69-7 here in Lincoln. And this series ends for a couple of years. We'll be right back. <laughs>